What's up guys, my name is Daryl, and in this video, I'm gonna show you all how to create a professional and modern e-commerce website step-by-step. -step. And you don't need to know any sort of coding or have any experience whatsoever because everything in this video is done with a simple drag and drop builder with hundreds of free templates for you to use on your website that'll make it super easy for you to build your e-commerce website. So if you've always wanted to learn how to create an e-commerce website for the very first time and you're kind of tired of the runaround, then this tutorial is for you because I promise you at the end of this video, you'll be able to create your own e-commerce website from scratch and you'll also become a WordPress expert. Now, as you can see, this website looks super professional. It's really modern and I'm going to teach you how to create a website that your visitors are going to be really impressed with and also make it really easy for them to navigate at the same time so they'll come back and purchase more and more of your products. If you take a closer look at this website, it's gonna look very similar to popular online retail stores like Walmart, H&M, Forever 21, and Guitar Center. We took direct design inspiration from these multi-billion dollar companies and applied it on our own website so you can be certain that you're going to walk away today with a professional and modern style e-commerce website that your visitors are going to be really impressed with. And personally, it really inspires me to make these e-commerce tutorials because people watch these videos and create their own websites and business like this website right here called frogsoap.com. This person with no experience watched my video and built their entire website and is now making thousands of dollars every single month using the same theme and WordPress platform that we are going to use today in this video. So if you're tired of the BS and you really want to create a professional and beautiful e-commerce website that'll make you a ton of money, then keep watching because right now I'm going to give you a quick tour of the website and I'm also going to show you the four step process we are going to use to create your new e-commerce website. So it's really simple. Step one, we get our domain and hosting. Step two, we install WordPress. Step three, we activate our theme. And step four, we start building our e-commerce website, creating products, and you will be accepting credit card payments right away right after watching this video. In fact, you're gonna have access to hundreds of free, beautifully designed templates that are professionally made and modern that'll make it even easier for you to make an amazing e-commerce website. Now, one thing to note here is that this is a live e-commerce website. So someone right now can come to this same website and use their credit card and purchase products right away. And that can get paid right away on this e-commerce website. So I'll walk you through the process on the customer's experience in just a bit. But first, I'll show you how to create this really nice landing page. So here we have this text, and then we also have a price, and we have these buttons right here. Now, you can add as many buttons as you want, and you can link this to any part of the website if you want to do that as well. Also, I'm going to give you the demo images for this website to help you follow along in this e-commerce tutorial. Next, we have our header. So here we have some really cool social icons. So you can have follow on Instagram, follow on Facebook, follow on TikTok. Pinterest, LinkedIn, YouTube, etc. Here we have a quick checkout button and also our cart. So your customers can always check back and see what is in their cart and they can click on checkout and purchase the products right away on this e-commerce uh, website. Here we have the dashboard. So your customers are gonna have their own personal dashboard where they can go ahead and update their payment details. They can update their account details and they can update anything and also track their orders as well. Next, we have our logo. Now, if you don't have a logo, don't worry about it because I'm going to give you a really cool website that you can get a really nice professional logo. Next, we have our menu to the left. So we have our home, the about. We have the my accounts with a drop down menu with the checkout and the cart. We have the shop page with the categories. So let's say, for example, that you're selling different categories. Now you can go ahead and list those categories on your menu as well. Here we have our blog and also our contact us page. So I'll show you how to set all of this up in this video. All right, so scrolling down here, we have these cool icons. So these are something where, you know, it'll encourage engagement such as free shipping, free returns and something like, uh, you know, in-home setup or something else. Here we have product category. So if you're selling various products, it's like for example, watches, laptops and headphones, you can categorize the products on your website. So when someone clicks on a specific category, it'll take them to a page where you're only selling that specific category. So here, this is the watches category. So I'm listing all of the watches and you can see here how it zooms in when I hover over it and your customers can click on quick view just to get a close up of the product and get uh, some more information about your current products. So scrolling down here, next we have our featured products. So if you wanna add like your most popular 
products on your homepage, you can do that. So here we have these products and your customers can click on quick view without having to leave the page and they can just kind of get more information about the product and scroll through the images, etc. So I'll show you how you can incorporate your featured products on your homepage. Now also what you can do is change the style of your product. So this theme has several different styles on how you can design your products and display it on your e-commerce website that'll make it look really nice and really modern. Next, I'll show you how you can incorporate this newsletter. So here you can see I subscribed earlier. So your customers can come to your websites and put in their email and click on subscribe. And they can go ahead and subscribe to your newsletter where you can send them spam and coupon codes and all that good stuff. Next, we have a last minute deal. So here I just added this timer and you can go ahead and list your products right here. So here you notice that we have this different style, which looks really nice. Also, we've added these a little bit closer and it just creates a sense of urgency. So if you wanna list your on sale products, you can go ahead and list them right here. Next, we have our blog. So if you wanna incorporate a blog, I'll show you how to add that on your e-commerce websites. And we cannot forget Instagram. So if you have an Instagram, uh, you can go ahead and display your feed right here. So every time you make a post, it'll automatically get uploaded to your e-commerce websites. And lastly, we have this really beautiful footer with our payment methods on our website. So here you can see we have a little bit about the company, we have the blog, we have some products, and we also have this newsletter where people can go ahead and also subscribe to your newsletter on your e-commerce websites. Now on the bottom right right here, if I click on this, it's gonna scroll to the top right back to the home page. So next, let's introduce you to the shop page. All right, so this right here is your beautiful shop page. And you can see right here, we have this video background where we have this really nice banner. And of course, you can change this to an image, another video, and you can change this text to whatever you want. Scrolling down here, you can see we have our products. Now your customers can go ahead and sort products by popularity. They can sort products from low to high or high to low, etc. On the left side here, people can go ahead and search for their favorite product or if they're looking for something. Your customers can also filter by price. So if they're broke and they have no money, they can say, all right, I wanna filter products between 50 to 250. And they click on filter, it's going to then show the products that are only from 50 to 250 and not more than that. So that's just a really cool feature that you can have on your e-commerce website. Here, I will filter it back. Here on the left side, we have our one day sale products. So if you have products that are on sale, you can display them right here. And also whenever your customer clicks on a product, the website will remind them that uh, they clicked on this. And so if your customers kind of forget on the product they clicked on, they can always see, oh, I viewed that product. When they go back, maybe they will buy it, which happens all the time. That is called retargeting. And I'm sure you've seen that on Facebook or Amazon or something like that. Here we have CR product where I added a video. So if you have like a promotion or if you have a video you wanna add e-commerce website, you can go ahead and add it right here. So this right here is an example of a simple product where we have the title, we have the price, and then we have the description. People can add it to the carts. People can see it's um, in the category of watches. They can go ahead and share it to their favorite social media network. Below that, there's some more description, like maybe made in USA, talk about the material, maybe a return policy. People right here can review the product by saying, oh, it was great, I loved it. And then they can go ahead and write a comment. And then below that, we have related products. So if your customer is looking at one product, we can recommend others. Now also on the bottom right here, you can see that there's a sticky. So this will remind the person that they're still viewing this product because you wanna keep their attention on the product. You know, that's the reason why you're watching this. You wanna make money. So this right here is an example of a simple product and we can customize and change this layout. And I'll talk more about that in this video. So let's say for example, you have a product, but you have different sizes or something like different colors. So here we have these headphones and we have different sizes. So we have small, medium, and large. So I'll say, all right, I want the medium one. And for the color, so here you can see how the product changed to blue because I selected medium blue. And right here we can click on zoom in and people can actually zoom in to get a better uh, view of your product. And then, you know, if they go back to white, it'll change vice versa. Scrolling down here, we have the same thing, social media icons, and then we have some description of the product and also related products. So it's just a really clean atmosphere. I mean, you guys can see this e-commerce website just looks really clean. It's really simple in that it's gonna be really easy for you to sell your products with this e-commerce website. 
Now, one thing to know also is that if you have videos of your product, you can display videos of your product. So for example, right here, I have this product. And if I click on this video button right here, it's gonna go ahead and display a video. So maybe if you have a video of your product, you can have this icon right here where it'll give someone a better uh, visual of your product. So that's really, really cool. So I'll show you how you can add this. It's actually really fun, really easy to set up. So this right here is something that you can expect to learn. So I'm gonna show you how to create this really nice shop page where you can add as many products as you want, have different categories, and you can virtually customize it any which way you want also for your e-commerce websites. So I'll tell you what, let's go ahead and buy something and show you the process of how your customers navigate through your e-commerce website. So I wanna buy something, I wanna buy this right here. I'm gonna add this right here to the cart. You can see right here how this displays. I can click on view the cart. Here we have this really cool banner that's saying, oh, use the coupon code. So I'll show you how you can add coupon codes that you can actually discount your products when they are viewing their cart. So here the total costs around $2,200. All right, that sounds good. Let's go ahead and buy it. So right here, I'll click on proceed to checkout. And right here we have our checkout details. So right here, the customer can put in their information, their first and their last name, their address, their town, their state, et cetera. And they can go ahead and pay you with credit card or PayPal. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna use a new payment method and I'm gonna use my credit card. You guys ready? So I'll go ahead and use my secret credit card. And uh, the, the total cost around $2,200. That sounds fine to me. I wanted to go ahead and save my credit card for future purchases and I have agreed to the terms and conditions. And right here, I'll click on place order. Now this is the exact process of what your customers are going to see and how they will purchase products on your e-commerce websites. By the way, guys, that credit card, it's in test mode, so it's not real. So don't think I put my credit card on the internet. So here you can see that the customer got a receipt. So here we have the order details. It has the products, the billing address, and all the information right here. Also, whenever you make a sale on your website, you will get an email automatically telling you that someone has bought something on your e-commerce website. So here you can see the name of the person, what was bought, how much it cost, and how they paid you, and also it gives you their billing information. And then right here, we just put congrats on the sale. You can put anything you want there, obviously, it's just for total purposes. And right here, your customers will also automatically get an email telling them about their product, what they bought, and this is their purchase receipt. So here you can see they bought the watch, they bought it with credit card, if there's a problem with their billing address, they can change it in their accounts. They can see uh, their address. And also you can leave a cool note for them saying, thank you for using our websites. Now your customers will also have their own personal accounts where they can look at their, their orders. So they can see all the orders they have purchased. They actually have their address. So if there is a problem with their address, they can go ahead and update their address. They have different payment methods where they can automatically store their credit card on your website and just overall take a look at their account details, see if there's any problems with their accounts. Also right here, you've noticed that I had this really cool slider. So we can advertise other products in their dashboard. So if you want to remind them about new products, you can go ahead and add a new products right there. So your customers will also have their own personal dashboard that they can manage and control on your e-commerce website. So if you guys are ready to learn how to create a professional and beautiful e-commerce website that just looks really professional and it's really simple to build and easy to navigate, let's go ahead and get started with this e-commerce tutorial. You guys ready? Let's go. All right, let's get this tutorial started. So the first thing we'll do is get your domain and hosting. So for example, myamazingwebsite.com. Step two, we'll install WordPress. And WordPress powers more than one third of the entire internet. It is very popular. Step three, we are going to install the number one best rated, best selling e-commerce theme for WordPress, also called Flatsum. And step four, we are going to build out your e-commerce website. And right after watching this video, people will be able to purchase products right away. Now there is a link in the description of this video. It'll take you to a page that looks just like this right here. And this right here is SiteGround.com. Now I've been using SiteGround.com for almost what, three years now? And SiteGround.com is the fastest and the most reliable web hosting. And how do I know that? How do you know that I'm telling the truth and I'm not just trying to lie to you? Well, I actually tested them against 14 other web hosting companies for three months. And SiteGround came up as the top two fastest and also the most reliable web hosting. So you can be certain that your site's gonna be really fast and you're not gonna have a lot of downtime with SiteGround. It's a very reliable 
web hosting company. So of course, there's three different plans. There's the startup, the grow big, and the grow geek. Now in all my videos, I recommend the grow big because with the grow big plan, you can host unlimited websites rather than just a single website. And that's a pretty big difference. So right here where it says get plan, click on get plan. All right, cool. So now we're going to go ahead and register your new domain. So for example, my new amazing website.com. So go ahead and talk it over with your girlfriend or boyfriend or have a beer and think about it. But uh, this is where you're going to put in your new domain. So I'll do something like paddywhacktutorial.com. Of course, this is just for tutorial purposes and paddywhack's my dog. So it's just, you know, it's, that's how it is. All right, so that domain is available. So if it's not available, it'll notify you saying pick another domain, but this right here, it's available. So right here, you'll put in your email and your password for your uh, new SiteGround accounts, your client information. Right now, uh, I'm actually visiting Thailand, but I'm from the United States. So I'd put USA and I live in California. So here I'll put in all my client information and scroll down. This is where you're gonna put your payment information, such as your credit card, etc. And then right here, you'll put in your social. I'm just kidding, guys. It does not ask you for your social security number. <laughs> I'm gonna get in trouble one day for that, but no, there's no, any website that asks for your social security, don't use it, but this website does not, total joking. So here we have our um, your plan. So for the period, I recommend 12 months because 12 months will actually give you enough time to decide if this is for you or not. And you'll also get a good discount for 12 months. Next, we have extra services. Now. Uh, I require you check this domain privacy. Now, the reason why you're gonna do this is because if you have this checked, it will protect your personal information. So it'll protect that. If you don't have this checked, people are gonna see your personal information. So you're gonna get a bunch of spam from all these random companies trying to sell you a bunch of crazy stuff like pharmaceutical pills and SEO packages, all this crazy spam, you don't want that. So if you have this checked, uh, you won't get any of that and it'll protect your personal information. So I highly recommend that you have this checked right here and scrolling down right here. So uh, once you're done filling out all that information, you will click on, I have confirmed to read and agree the terms of service. And I'm sure you guys are all going to read uh, this stuff and this stuff, right? I know everyone out there reads all that. So once you read all that, uh, you'll go ahead and click on the check. Also, if you want to go ahead and register for SiteGround's newsletters, where they give you spam, I mean, they give you promotional uh, emails, you can go ahead and check that as well. And once you're done filling out all the information on this page, you'll click on pay now, and I will meet you on the very next page. All right, cool, so this is your new SiteGround dashboard. So right here, which says set up sites, click on set up sites. Right here, we have the option to start a new website or migrate a website. So for most of you, you're gonna click on start new website. So right here, click on select, you'll scroll down and then we have some options. And on the left side right here, you're going to see WordPress. So right here, click on select. Now this right here is going to be your login credentials to access your WordPress website. So go ahead and write this information down and don't forget it because you will need this information to log in and make changes to your website. All right, so I went ahead and I put in an email address and a password, and then right here, I'll click on continue. Now, right now, it's, it's basically trying to ask us if you want to add the SiteGround site scanner. Uh, for those of you getting started, I don't recommend it. You can always get this later and you can add it to your plan. So right here, click on finish. So right now, what's gonna do is that it's going to install WordPress onto our domain so we can go ahead and make changes and build our websites. Also, go ahead and check your email. And in your email, you're gonna see that you'll get this um, email that says verification required. So go ahead and click on that and verify the email to make sure that uh, you don't get your domain suspended because once you purchase hosting, they need to verify that it's actually a real person. So go ahead and verify your domain and get that all set. So you just click a button and the link and everything's all done. So right here, you can see that I just got the email saying that this was installed on my website, which is pretty cool. So let's go back to your SiteGround page. Now, if you get this page right here, which happens quite a bit, don't worry about it. Uh, right here, just click on home and then click on websites. So whenever you build a website, you'll see your website right here listed. So right here, just go ahead and click on site tools. 
And this right here is your new SiteGround dashboard. Now, also for those of you who installed it and it was successful, just click on go to your account and it'll bring you to this same page right here. So this right here is just like your dashboard where you can see your name servers, your IP address, etc. On the left side right here, you'll see WordPress. So you'll click on WordPress and click on install and manage. Now go ahead and scroll down to the bottom of the page here and you'll see that you have the domain right here. You'll see the installation of WordPress, the version, and then right here you, you see action. So you can log into the admin panel. So right here, click on login to admin panel. Okay, so this right here is the WordPress wizard and it's just going to ask you a few questions, but we can actually skip this. So on the bottom right here where it says exit, go ahead and click on exit. And congratulations, this is your new website. So right now we're in the dashboard and if you wanna see your website live on the internet, on the top left right here, you'll click on visit sites. And this right now is your new website. So your website's live on the internet. If someone goes to your domain, they're gonna see this right now. So don't worry, we're gonna make it look really amazing. So right here, go ahead and click on dashboard. Now there's a few things that we need to do before we actually build our website. We need to change some general settings and we also need to fix our SSL up here. So the first thing that you'll do is go over here to settings and go to permalinks. Now you wanna make sure that this is under post name by default. So if it's not on post name, make sure it's on post name. This right here is just making your website look a lot cleaner. So for example, you know, your website.com dash about us or dash contact, not all this other numbers and stuff like that. So make sure it's on post name and click on save changes. The next thing you'll do over here under users, click on your profile. Now, whenever you want to change your password or if you want to change your email, this is where you're going to do it. Also, you can go ahead and change the color scheme of your current uh, dashboard. Now you're gonna see this a lot. So make sure it's something that you like. I like Midnight's. I think it's the easiest way to see what you're doing. If you scroll down right here, you'll see that you have your email address. So you can change that at any time that you want. And also right here, you can go ahead and add in a new password. So if you wanna go ahead and change your password in the future, this is where you're going to do it. But uh, right here, I'll just click on update profile. All right, now there's a few things that we need to do. So we need to go ahead and install some plugins and also disable some. So right here, click on plugins and click on installed plugins. Now, in case you don't know what plugins are, hey, plugins are basically applications for your website. So there's an application slash plugin for uh, selling online, for SEO, for a contact form. But uh, right here, we need to click on deactivate under WordPress starter. We don't need that plugin just yet. And one thing that I want you to do right here is go to install plugins and click on add new. The next plugin that we're going to use is we're going to install an SSL to get rid of this not secured on our website. So if you usually, when you go to websites, like for example, right here, you'll always see that this is secured. Also, if you go to Google, you'll also see that it's always secured, but you notice our website does not have that. So we need to change that. So right here, type in really simple SSL. It's actually very funny. SSLs originally came out only for e-commerce websites, but now Google introduced a new algorithm saying any website has to have it. So uh, right here, you'll see really simple SSL. So click on install now, and then you'll click on activate. Now SSLs, the main purpose of an SSL is to actually encrypt credit card information that comes on your website. So that is the actual reason for an SSL, but even if you're not selling online, uh, Google still recommends that you have an SSL. I know, it's pretty crazy. So the next thing that we're gonna do is we're actually going to install the SSL on our website with SiteGround. So let's go back over here to our dashboard. So right here we have these options on the top. Right here we have security, we have speed, we have email, etc. So click on security, and then you'll click on SSL manager. So here we have our domain and we're gonna go ahead and select an SSL. So right here, go ahead and click on let's encrypt wildcard. And then right here, you'll click on get. So right now what SiteGround's doing is that it's installing an SSL onto our domain that'll give us the secured little notification right here. And it'll also encrypt information for credit card users, et cetera. 
All right, cool. So the SSL has been installed on our website. So there is nothing more for us to do on this page. So you can click on dashboard and then check any other settings. But right here, if we go back to our website, uh, we need to refresh this page now. So click on reload this page. And now you'll see that the website actually can find our SSL. So right here, click on go ahead and activate SSL. Now, before you do this, you will have to go ahead and log in again. So uh, make sure you have your email information and your password written down, the one that I told you to write down, because it's going to kick you out of WordPress. And I'm going to show you now how to log in again to your website. So right here, click on go ahead and activate SSL. Now, you'll only need to do this once. So uh, you'll never need to do it ever again. Right here on the top left right here, now you can see we have the connection is secured. So congratulations. Now, right here, you'll enter in the email and the password that you wrote down earlier. So this is how you log in to your WordPress website. So I'm going to go ahead and put in my email and my password. And then right here, I'll click on login. All right, cool. So you can see that our website is now secured and I'm going to close all these little annoying little things right here. And now we have the uh, connection is secured. So congratulations. You now have a secured website and it is looking good according to Google. Now I'm going to go ahead and log out and just show you all how to log into your website in the future. So right here, I'll click on log out. And what I'll do here is I will just go ahead and show you this domain. So to log into your website, what you're going to do is right here, type dash WP dash admin. Now this is the address that you'll have to type every time that you want to go ahead and log in and build or make changes to your website. So there, click on enter. My information right here is stored. I'll click on remember and log in. All right, congratulations. So now you have a fully functional website that is SSL verified, etc. Now let's go ahead and do the next step where we're going to go ahead and install our theme. Now, currently right now we're using a default theme. It's very plain. It's very boring. There's not a lot we can do with it. So the next thing we're going to do is step three. We're going to purchase and install the number one best-selling e-commerce theme for WordPress, which is called Flatsum. Now there is a link below to purchase the Flatsum theme, and it'll take you to a page that looks just like this right here. So this right here is the Flatsum theme, and it is the number one best-selling WooCommerce theme for WordPress. And it has a lot of good reviews, and it is super easy to use. So you can see here how it has tons of sales. A lot of people like it, and the item rating is very good. So it has around 5,457 positive reviews. Now, there's a lot of themes that you can use for WordPress, a lot of e-commerce themes. So over here, you can see that this is the best-selling e-commerce theme for WordPress, and you're gonna see Flatsum as number one. It's number one because it has its own builder, it has tons of templates, tons of options, and it is not gonna limit you to do anything that you want for your e-commerce websites. A lot of these other themes, um, they're not really that good. <laughs> you know, I've used tons of themes, guys, and they're really not that good. So uh, Flatsum, again, is the best theme for e-commerce. So it does have a small fee, but for 59 bucks for what you get, it's incredible. And I have tons of themes. So what you'll do here is you'll go ahead and click on Buy Now, and you'll go ahead and purchase this theme on ThemeForest. Or, yeah, ThemeForest or Envato Market. I don't know. This website gives itself two names. It's really weird. Now, once you actually go ahead and purchase this, you will go ahead and download it. So over here, I'll go to my downloads. All right, so I purchased Flotsam and it is right here. So this is the theme that you're gonna need. So right here, you'll click on download and click on installable WordPress file only. So you'll go ahead and click on that. And you'll notice right here on the bottom left that the theme is now downloading. So you're gonna take this file and you're gonna upload it to your WordPress website. So going back over here on appearance, we'll click on themes. Now these right here are free themes and they're just like, they're not for, they're not for e-commerce. They're just for, they're for anything and they're really not that good. I've never even, I've used one or two and they're extremely limited. So I wouldn't recommend them at all. Right here, you'll click on upload theme, choose the file, and then you'll go ahead and select the file that you downloaded. All right, so here's the file. It is the Flatsum Multipurpose Responsive WooCommerce theme. Right here, I'll click on open and click on install now. All right, cool. So it has just installed the Flatsum theme onto our website. 
So right here, you'll click on activate. All right, cool. So right here, it has a wizard. Now, personally, you don't need to go through this. So for right now, just click on not right now, because I'm going to basically kind of guide you through the process here. They're kind of they're going to jump you around to different areas and it might confuse you. So right here, click on not right now. Now, let's just take a quick look at our website. So right now, you've noticed that we have Flatsum right here. We have some different options. We have some other little different things that popped up. And right here, click on Visit Sites. And you'll notice right away that the site has kind of changed in some aspect. So we have the menu right here. The, the font is different. The color. We now have just a lot of different styles and functionality to our website. So you can see here how the site's slowly changing step by step. Now, let's go ahead and make some pages. So we don't have a menu right here. You know, we need like the home, the about, the contact us, etc. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's make some pages. So let's go back to our dashboard right here. Go to pages and click on all pages. Now, these are all the pages that are actually on your website right now. And these are just default ones that you don't need. So right here, we'll click on all of these and move to trash. So this is how you delete pages. Now let's make some pages. So I want a home page, right? You want an about us page, a contact us page, right? So here, I'll close this and simply type in home. Click on publish and publish. And we're going. Now, here's a shortcut right here. Plus new and page. Ah, shortcuts. See, that's shortcuts. Here we go. About us. Publish and publish. And then we'll make our last page, which is the contact us. Now, the other pages like the shop, the cart, my account, that's going to be automatically created for us later once we install a free plugin. And then here I'll do contact. Click on publish and publish. So we made the pages and now we need to actually create a menu. So we need to basically tell the website, OK, so where are these pages going now? Right here under appearance, we have menus. And go ahead and give your menu a name. So this is this is my main menu, right? Main menu. Here I'll click on create a menu. All right. And then right here we see pages. We can click on view all and it's going to list all the pages. Now click on select all right here and click on add to menu. You're going to see that we have two home pages. So we have two. Now this one right here again is default and it says a custom link. Now we're going to use custom links a little bit later when we talk about product categories. But for right now, we don't need a custom link. So on this one right here, just click on remove. I don't want that. Get out of here. And this right here is my main menu. So click on main menu and just click on save menu. All right. Now let's go ahead and take a quick look at our website right here. So right here, we'll go to the top left and click on visit sites. And now you can see that we have the home the about and the contact. And if I click on them, they're completely blank. There's nothing there. Now there's one thing that we need to do here. So if you notice our main home page is not our home page. So we need to assign the home page as our primary home page. So what we, what we can do here is over here in our customize, we'll click on customize. And then what we're going to do is you're going to see you have all these new options. Now, just to give you a crash course, guys, on the theme customizer, it just allows you to change stuff. So right here, I'll just give you an example. Header, you can change the header style right here. You see this? So now it looks like that. And then over here, now we have something that looks like this right here or right here with the buy button, etc. So essentially what the theme customizer does is that it just changes the actual header and the footer. So it controls everything outside of the page builder. But uh, I'm not going to go into this too much because I'm going to talk about this a little bit later. So I'm going to go ahead and click on publish right now and go back. So next, let's go ahead and keep going to what we were doing before. I'll go back. We're going to find home page settings. And then you're going to see a static page. Now for the home page, I want to make that a home page. So right here you see blog or I'm sorry, the post page here. I'll click on publish. So if you want a blog, you would simply click on plus new page and then go ahead and make a blog page. So for example, right here, we can do blog, right? And then click on add. So what I just did right there was I actually just made a blog page for us. Now we still have to assign it to the menu, but that's just a shortcut. WordPress gives you a lot of cool shortcuts, guys. So here I'll click on publish. So what I can do really quickly is give you another little kind of crash course here. So right here under menus, you can also customize your menu through the theme customizer. So right here, I'll click on main menu and you can see that we have 
all these various uh, pages and here you can rearrange them, etc. So um, that's just a little, you know, a little rundown if you want to go ahead and design the menu from here if you want to do that. But I'm just giving you, you know, that option. So here I'll click on close. And you can see here now the website sort of coming together. So we have the home page, the about us page, the contact, we have the buttons and the footer. All we need now is the actual content in the middle of the website, which is we're ready to build a website. But uh, right before I do, for those of you who want to assign the blog to your menu, let me go ahead and do that really quick. You don't have to follow me here if you don't want a blog, but I'm just gonna show you really quickly. So again, appearance and menu. So whenever you create a page, this is how you're gonna add it to the menu. So again, right here, pages, the blog page, which we created, right, from the theme customizer, the shortcut way, add to menu, and then just put it wherever. I can even have it as, as a dropdown. You know, I'll, I'll leave it as a dropdown, why not? And go to save menu. And then right here, visit sites, voila. So we made our homepage, we made our menu, and we assigned it. So I think right now uh, we're pretty much all ready to get started with uh, building out our websites. So whenever you want to design your website, there's two ways you can do it. Right here under edit page, you can click on edit with UX builder, or you can click on edit page. I'm just giving you two options and click on edit with UX builder. It's the same thing. It, it, get, it brings you to the same place. So click on edit with UX builder. All right, it's cool. So right here we have this WP content blocks and we don't need this because this is the default uh, Gutenberg and Gutenberg is far from being anything even good. So <laughs> we're gonna delete that. So to delete that with your new editor, you see this gear icon, just click on this and click on deletes. So think of this as your new building. This is like your new building area. This is where you're gonna build out your website. So let's just go ahead and uh, get started. So there's a lot of templates that uh, are here, but uh, these are absolutely terrible because they don't include the image. They don't give you the image sizes. A lot of them are not arranged properly and they're very confusing. So I know the images make it look really simple, but trust me, you wanna do this yourself. So right here, we'll click on add elements. Now there's different elements that you can add to your website. So there's like a, a text, there's a button, all this stuff. So just to give you an example right here. I'll click on text and there's different style text that you can you know, apply and I'll click on apply. And then if you wanna change it, you'd open the text editor and then you can go ahead and change this to anything and you'll see how it's changing on the website. And then for example, if you wanna add something else right here under this plus icon, I'll click on this and I'll add in a button, something like that. you know. And you can change the button style to whatever you want to all these uh, different ways and then apply. So this is just a quick rundown of how to change stuff. And then for every single module, there's like different ways on how to style it. And just by reading this, I think you'll understand what this is, you know, like you'll understand that um, uh, the style, you can do simple, shade, uh, here they have radius. So radius deals with circle and squares, basically. If you wanna have uh, an icon on your button, you can go ahead and have an icon. Now I'll talk more about padding and margin in a little bit, which is this right here, which can be, um, it's, it's actually pretty simple, but this would be a bad situation to teach you in. But that's just a quick rundown of how to add stuff. So let me go ahead and delete this really quick. Now let's go ahead and do something else where we're going to use the template library, which is what you're gonna be using for most of the tutorial here. So right here under add elements, you'll see Flatsum Studio. Click on Flatsum Studio. Okay, now right here you'll notice that Flatsum actually has pre-designed sections they've made for everybody. So you can use these sections, you can use the images, you can use everything about them. And you can see on the, on the left right here how they've basically created sections into categories. So here we have campaigns. Here we have call to actions. Now call to actions for beginners is just buttons. That's what, a, it's just basically buttons. That's it, it's just a fancy word of saying buttons. So. Think of it like just buttons. So here we have banner, et cetera. So we're gonna turn this website into our website. Okay, so first click on e-commerce and let's scroll down here. I'm gonna scroll down and you're gonna find a template that looks like this right here. It's called the single product focus. And if you wanna see it up close, you can click on preview. And what that's gonna do is that it's gonna show you what this is gonna look like. So you can see here how I got a lot of ideas from this page. I didn't use all of it, of course. I decided to take a lot of this out because this is more for like a web design business. 
But I like the landing page and I just decided I'll use this, but I'll change some of the images and the colors, etc. So right here, I'll click on import. Now I don't want to import the images here because there's a lot of images that are unnecessary. Then right here, you'll click on start. So what it's going to do now is that it's just going to import the structure of everything and then we can design it the way we want. Now also there is a link in the description of this video to download free images that you can use to follow along in this tutorial. So first what I'll do is I'll click on update. So this now is my new home page when I click on update. So now I'm saving all of my progress. And if we scroll down right here, you'll notice that everything was imported. Now I don't want to use all of this right here because this is just too much stuff for me to use. So whenever you want to delete stuff, you'll go to the gear icon right here. So selling points, you'll see how the sections highlighted and I'll click on deletes right here, deletes here, deletes. And then again, we'll keep deleting this because we just don't need this stuff because this stuff is just not relevant to our websites. I just want the landing page. So what you can do here is just kind of grab sections that really drastically speed up the process of making your website because this section alone would take me a while to make from scratch. You know, this is a text module, two buttons, uh, it's a two column row, etc. So what I'll do here first is I want to make this a full width page, right? I don't like this box look. So on this gear icon right here, I'll click on this. I'll go ahead and find templates and I'll change this to page full width. All right. So now you can see that this has gone across the page and I'll click on apply. Now in the future, if you want to just go ahead and delete everything from the page and you messed up right here, you see clear post content, you can click clear and they'll delete everything. So you can start over from scratch just in case you don't like your template. So let's go back over here and now let's go ahead and kind of dissect this. Let's find out how to, how to change all this stuff. So right here we have section here, I'll click on options. And then now you can see that we have different options to change this section. So I can, I can control the color. So right now we're controlling the section, the background of this. So right here we can add an overlay. We can change the color of this, etc. Now this right here is an overlay. So if you take this off, it's going to be the default color. So if you want just like a, sp a basic color, you can go ahead and do that as well. But uh, I want to go ahead and upload an image. So right here under select media, I'm going to click on that. Click on media library. Click on select files. Now I'm going to go ahead and find the images that I actually gave you guys. So I'm going to go ahead and use these same images. So here I'm going to hold shift and I'm going to take all of the images that I have and I'm going to upload them one time because I don't want to have to keep uploading them because that'll take a long time, right? So right here I will click on open and this will take probably like two minutes, three minutes at most. All right, you guys are ready. You guys are done. So if you've noticed right here, we have this image right here. So take this image and then right here on the bottom, right, you'll click on use this image and voila, we have this beautiful image. And what you can do here is you can go ahead and change this text. You can change the button color, etc., just by clicking on the actual module. So for example, I'll click on the button and now you see that all the options are now changed specifically for the button. So here, let's just go through some of these. So here we have letter case. We have different colors. Now this right here is actually through the theme customizer. So we haven't gone over through that yet, but we'll go through it a little bit later, but I'm going to put it as my secondary color for now. We'll come back at the end of the video. I'm sorry, at the end of the page. And I'll talk more about the theme customizer and this, because I, I don't want to jump into the theme customizer. I'd rather, you know, keep going. So next we have the animate feature right here. So for some browsers, uh, it doesn't work sometimes the animate feature. So what you can do, so for example, I'll just do uh, bounce in up and I'll click on apply and apply. So if you want to see the image or the animation, what you can do is you can go to your website and just click on the refresh button and you'll see the button right here, how it has that animate feature where it just kind of goes up like that. And you can kind of go through trial and error. So again, click on the button here. You can do something like blur in and click on apply and update. And then over here, just refresh the page again. And now you see how it blurs in like that. So it's really cool, you know, so you can do that with every single module, which is really amazing. So usually you'd have to enter a bunch of CSS and JavaScript, but with this theme, it just has all these features inside of it. Now let's just say you want to go ahead and change this text. So you click on the text right here 
and open the text editor. So just simply go ahead and put in like the, you know, the new the iPhones watch or something like that. iPhones watch. And then click on OK. And there you go. And you can go ahead and add as many uh, text buttons as you want. So you can see here how every little module has a plus icon. So let's say, for instance, I want to go ahead or I'll click on apply. I want to add something right here below the text, but also above the button. So I'll just click on this and then we can add in something like a row. And I want maybe a one column row. And then here I'll say, OK. And then you just grab an element. So here, add an element, and then simply just go ahead and put in something like, uh, I don't know, social icons. If you want to add in social icons, and then here you you would just go ahead and put in, you know, the address of the social icons to make them display. So you can add in as many as you want. So that's just how you can kind of add stuff uh, to your website. And this can even be like an app landing page. So you can have your application right here. And you can have like a, a an image that says uh, go to Spotify or go download it here or go to the App Store or whatever. But uh, I don't really want this, so let me show you now how to kind of move stuff around. So here on the left, right here, we have these different uh, rows. So you can see how how the row controls this section, the gap, and then we have this right here, which is the buttons. So let's say, for instance, I want to go ahead and take this and I want to hold it, and I want to drag it below. So you can kind of take your stuff and kind of just move it around and drag and drop it to wherever you want it to be. And this applies for every single module on the left side. So you can drag this anywhere. You can put it anywhere that you want, etc. But right here, I want to take this row and I don't want it. So right here, I can click on delete or I can click right here and click on delete. It's the same thing. So next, let's add in this section right here. I want to add in these three icons and these three images with product categories. So over here, I can do this various ways. So right here, we will click on this plus icon. We can use the Flatsum Studio, but let me show you really quickly how to do it manually if you want to go that route. So right here, we can add a row. You would choose the number of rows. So I'll just say I want a three column row and then click on apply. And just simply click on the plus icon of the add elements and simply add an element that you want to add inside of this box. So right here, we will find the icon the icon box. Now the big flaw with the icon box is that it doesn't have icons that come with the theme. So you'll actually have to go ahead and click on select media and you'll have to select your own icons. There's other websites that you can download icons for. One's called freepick.com and I'll leave that in the description below. But I find that very inconvenient. So I don't like to use the icon box manually. So here I'll click on delete. But if you want to add in any elements, you would just simply go ahead and just grab an element. Maybe you want to add in uh, I, I don't know, a, a testimonial. Here we go. Testimonial looks really cool. And then you can always change the way it looks with these different styles, etc. So that's how you can actually go ahead and do it manually. But I want to use the Flatsum Studio because the Flatsum Studio is one of the main reasons why people use this theme because it's, it's extremely easy. So right here, you'll see this row that we made. So I can go ahead and take this and delete it because I don't want to use that right here plus and then here I'll find the Flatsum Studio. So there's various things on you know what we can add. So at this point, I think you can kind of get a, a better understanding now on how to use this. So right here we have call to action and the one I chose, I'm sorry, I use icons really quickly. So services and icons and I chose this one right here. So it has the icon boxes already and everything's already done. So here I'll just click on import. All right, cool. So it added the icons for us. Now, one thing I want to do here is I kind of want to adjust the padding. And I did talk about padding, but I didn't really go over it. So I want to reduce the space here because I feel like it's too big. And I kind of want these, these gray little lines to end right here. So whenever you want to reduce the padding of something, options, and we're going to find padding. So right here, you see under layouts, there's padding. So padding is essentially space. So the more padding you have, the more space that you have. So right here, if I hold it and I drag it, you're going to see how it increases the space. And then if I hold it and go back, it reduces the space. Now, if I have something like zero padding, you can see how there's zero space. But I kind of like that look. I like how it's very 
condensed and I like how it's structured and looks pretty clean. So I like this look. And then right here, there's different color schemes, light or dark, etc. You can also make this sticky. Uh, scroll for more. It has this little scroll button. So you can kind of go through these options on your own time and kind of, you know, mess around with it and check it out, etc. But uh, for right now, I think that this right here looks pretty good. I find that uh, this is, you know, exactly what I need. So you can kind of go through these options and just take a look at them. Uh, this right here is for video. Uh, I don't want a video. We might add one on our shop page, but uh, you wouldn't want to add a video behind this because it just wouldn't look good. So next, let's go ahead and add in this section right here. So what I'll do here is say, uh, okay, uh, I'm done with this section. Now really quickly, if you want to go ahead and change the color of the text, you can click on the text, go to open text editor. You'll click right here on the toggle toolbar. And then here we have text color and I'll just make it a dark black and click on okay. So you can see here how the text is now black. Now I'll also show you how to change the font. The font does require a free plugin and I'll talk more about that once we actually install WooCommerce. But for now, let's just keep using the page builder to get you more comfortable. And then we'll talk about changing the font. So I made this section right here. So I'll apply this again. Now let's go ahead and make this section right here. Now right here, you'll see add elements. Click on add elements and the Flotsam Studio will always display. So usually when you reduce padding a lot, it's kind of hard to find the button to add the Flotsam Studio. So if you ever can never find it or something like that, or so if there's a problem, just click on add elements. So right here, we'll go ahead and find banner. And then under banner, you're gonna see this one right here. It's called the e-commerce info box three column. I'll click on preview. And this is the one that I used. You'll notice it looks a lot different because I made some changes to it. So right here, I'll click on import. Now I don't want the images because I already have my own. So here I'll click on start. All right, cool. So now we have this box and what I can do is uh, click on the actual backgrounds and I can add in my own background. So you'll see over here how I have the headphones. So I'll go ahead and find the headphones right here and I will use this image. Now, whenever you upload an image, you'll see that the image doesn't display. However, we have this little uh, button right here and we can kind of drag it and we can display where we want the image to show on the background. And we need to actually kill the overlay right here. So right here under the overlay, click on X. So now you can kind of see the actual image and you can see how it's uh, displaying right there. Pretty cool. So you can change the text to anything that you want, obviously. So right here under product sale, you can do something like uh, headphones, you know, headphones and click on OK. And I'll click on back. So right here under the banner, you notice that this really isn't a link to the products or this isn't a link. This is just a background image. However, if we scroll down right here, you'll see that we can put a link right here. So we can go ahead and put in our products later and then link them to that specific page later. So I'm just kind of giving you a little, um, just thinking outside the box here. You don't have to use, this can be a button. This can be anything that you want. So just kind of think outside the box here. So uh, that's just uh, you know one way on how to do it. And we'll talk more about linking to your categories in just a bit. Now, also you've noticed right here how I have this black border right here and we don't have that by default. So I'm gonna show you now how to add a border. So first off, we have a border right here. And I'm gonna add in something like 10 pixels. So 10 pixels. And now you'll see right here how there's this border right there. And I wanna add it to all of the sides. So you can see here on the picture, this is top, right, bottom, left. That's, that's how it goes. And I wanna make this a solid border. And I wanna give it a color. So right here, I'll give it a black color. And then I can even add a radius, which gives it that circular, but that doesn't really work well. So we'll just leave it at that. So now you can kind of see how I just added a border around it. Let's do it for the next one. Right here, select media. So here I'll just grab um, a laptop image. So I'll take this one, click on use this. And then I'll simply change the text to something like, you know, discounted laptops, discounted laptops. Click on OK. And then I'll click on the banner right here. And then I'll go back over here, make sure the overlay is dead. 
Actually, I think we need an overlay, just a little bit. Yeah, we do need an overlay there, just a little bit, because the, the white text is hard to read with the white background. And then right here, I will simply go ahead and add in another one. So here we have 10, 10, 10, 10. This is fun, right, guys? You, you guys are you guys are you guys are learning web design, and right now we have the whole coronavirus thing. So this is a good option on how to work remotely, you know. And I'm sure you guys are all tired of the coronavirus news. And if you're watching this from six months from now, you're like, oh, I remember that, <laughs> you know. So now let's do it one more time for this one right here. So here I have the watches. So I'll just simply go ahead and click on image. I will find a watch. I think that's the same one right there. Yeah, the same one. Use this image. And we can always move this image around or right here. We can kind of, you know, mess around with it. And then here I will take off this color. The overlay is okay. Now, one thing I didn't mention was the hover. So right here we have the zoom. We have the blur. We have like the, the fade out. So when you hover over it, it'll have different animations. So zoom in long see that so you can kind of go through the animations uh, on your own time to kind of see what you want but uh, right here again a lot of border we'll add in 10 I find the border is really cool actually you know it really it really makes it clean and it kind of emphasizes it, it cleans around the edges it just looks really cool I think here I'll add in solid and then I'll add in a black color as well all right next let's say you want to go ahead and reduce the space right here so actually right here there's a gap so when you imported this template, there is a gap module. And here you can see the height. You can actually go ahead and make it go down to zero or you can leave it at 45, something like that. So it just adds a little gap. So there are modules that actually add space in the flat sum theme. So now right here, this is all good and done. If I click right here, you'll see it just looks good. So, so far the website's really coming along, you know, and what you want to do is just click on update and apply or apply an update and just click on X and this is your website live. So this is how it really looks like on the internet. So people can come to this website right now and this is what they're gonna see. So let's go ahead and add the title in really quickly. Here I'll click on edit with UX Builder and then we'll move on to the more interesting stuff of adding products. So I'll scroll down here, I'll click on the, or add elements, Flotsam Studio. Actually, no, 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 no. click on back here. No, we're, we're gonna use this now, we're gonna use this. We're gonna use title title and for the style I want it is centered so this right here is going to you know it's going to introduce our products so for the title I'll do featured featured products and we can make it a little bit bigger something like that all right something like that okay all right apply oh, that's that, that's good you guys are good and let's now create products so here I'll click on exit the builder and you can see again, the site looks good. Everything's going according to plan. Now let's add WooCommerce plugin. So that'll basically give us the ability to start creating products. So right here we have plugins and I'll click on add new. Now again, right here I'll click on popular, just give you a crash course, I'll close this. So there's just various different plugins out there for virtually everything for WordPress. This right here is the one that we're gonna use this right here, um, this one helps with the SSL. This right here, this imports stuff. I don't even know. This is a contact form that we can use actually. This right here protects against malware. There's so many plugins out there for virtually everyone. So once you're kind of working on your website, you might want to venture off and do your own thing and kind of find out, um, you know, what's what you you might need to do something for your site that someone else doesn't. But this is the one that we need right here. So right here, you'll click on install now. It's called WooCommerce. So right here, you'll type in WooCommerce and click on enter. And this is it right here. You'll click on install now. Now what this is gonna do is that this is going to automatically create the pages for us. And it's going to have the ability for us to take payments and to create products. So right here, click on activate. So WooCommerce is gonna prompt us with a setup wizard. So right here, click on yes, please. Now right here, they're asking us to connect WooCommerce with Jetpack and Jetpack is another plugin and it's also a service that allows us to do some really cool things like have automated sales tax, et cetera. But we're gonna do that a little later. So right here on the bottom, click on proceed without Jetpack. 
And here you can choose the option to, you know, have them know what's going on by sharing data or not, but I'm not going to share it. So I'll just click on next. So where's your store located? Now, if you are an e-commerce store and you are not having an address, don't worry about it because you can delete all of this later. So for example, right here, I'll just do uh, 1099 uh, California way. I'll put United States, California, city of good old Santa Clarita. And then here I'll put 91355. And I'll just say, uh, I mean, there's an option for this or not. I really don't know what it does if you tell them or not, to be honest, but I'm just gonna click on continue. So what industry are you in? You don't have to tell them if you don't want to, but um, oh, look at that, hemp, hemp derived products. You know this company's from San Francisco if they're offering you, <laughs> if they're asking you that. But uh, I'm, uh, what, are we, what are we doing? Uh, electronics, yeah, electronics, there we go, continue. Now I want you to select physical, and downloads. Now these other products are plugins that you don't really need. In fact, I do have tutorials on all of these plugins, but uh, that's that's for something completely next time. Uh, all you need is physical products or virtual or downloadable products. And then you'll click on continue. How many products do you plan to sell? I don't know. And then are you selling? No. Now they're gonna offer us different plugins. Now these are free plugins, but I just don't want to do this right now because I don't want to go ahead and dive into Google Shopping and MailChimp. So I don't want these plugins on my websites. And then here I'll click on continue and it's saying, okay, choose a theme. Now I'm already using Flatsum, so I'll just continue with my active theme. All right, cool. So this is going to be your new dashboard. So whenever you make sales or whenever you see orders, it's going to appear right here under your WooCommerce dashboard. You're going to have charts and orders and all this really cool stuff. Now, if you see a dashboard that looks like this right here, don't panic. This tutorial is not outdated. <laughs> this is a new platform that they're going to be introducing very soon. Right now they're testing it. So I just want to make sure that if you see this right here, it's not out to date and we will cover all of this a little bit later in the video, so do not worry. All you need to know is that on the left side right here, you see products. And right here, if you click on all products, this will display all the products that you currently have. Now, right now we have no products. So let's go ahead and create our first product. You ready? You ready? All right, let's do this. Create product, click on create product. So I'm first gonna show you all how to create a simple product. So a simple product is essentially something with no features. You can only add it to the cart. So there's no options and it's gonna look just like this right here. So it's just a title, a price and a description and that's pretty much it. So over here, let's go ahead and give it a name. So I'll just do uh, e-phones, e right? Or I don't know, e-phones. And this is gonna be your long tail description. So this description right here is going to display at the bottom of the page. And this can be something like the material, you know, like 100% cotton or 100% here, uh, fiber uh, made in USA, 30 day money back. These are something that are like for technical things like, you know, material where it's from or whatever you want to put at the bottom of the page. And then right here we have price. Now don't worry about the currency. We can change this to over like 200 currencies. I'll talk more about all the settings as far as shipping, taxes, currencies, all that stuff a little bit later in the video. Let's for right now, let's just get you comfortable on how to actually make products. So right here, I'll just say, all right, the e-phone is right now $600, but it's on sale for 500 bucks. And here I can even schedule a sale. So from April 1st to something like April 30th, it's gonna be on sale from the $600 to 500. But I wanna make this right now because I wanna show you how it looks like right now, etc. Inventory. This is where you're gonna put in your SKU numbers. Manage stock. If you want to show people how many you have in stock, you can put it right here. So I have 10 in stock. Do you want to allow back orders? Sure, why not? When do you want to be notified by email that you're running low on the product? Well, maybe around five, something like that. Shipping, right here you can talk about the weight and the dimensions, etc. Link products, so upsells and cross-sells. So upsells, you can actually read it right here, are products that you recommend while you're currently viewing the product. So for example, these right here are upsells. So you can see here how I'm viewing this product 
and now it's recommending these products. So this is an example of an upsell. If I go to my carts, if I add something to the carts and I view the carts, right here, there'll be boxes recommending other products. Those are cross sells. So a cross sell is something that you recommend when they're checking out. So for example, they might want an add on for something else. So that's an example of a cross sell and Amazon does that all the time. So you're recommending other products with in conjunction with this product. So that's an example of a cross sell and we can add those once we actually have products right now, we don't have any products. This right here is going to be your product short description. So for example, I'll go ahead and click on the phone and this is going to be this text right here. So this text is very important. You want to make sure that it's something that um, is representing your product and your accurate. So here I'll paste this product image, go ahead and select an image now for your product. So I selected a phone, right? So here I'll select this phone, set product image. Now, do you have other images of this product? If you do, you can click on add product calendar gallery images, the tongue twister, and just select whatever other images that you have and add that to the gallery product tags. We can put something like phones. And this right here is important product categories. So I want to make a new category here for phones. So I want all of my categories to be in phones. You understand? And don't worry, uh, this website right here, we'll go to the back end and we'll talk more about everything. Once we're kind of done with everything to get you a better understanding of how exactly I did everything on this website. So we have phones right there. Now for general right here, you can see we have the price advanced purchase note. If you want to give them a note, you can go ahead and leave them a note order. No, uh, I'm sorry, menu order. This will actually position the product where you want it to be. However, with our theme, we can actually position products with our theme. So with other themes, you kind of have to go through it manually, but with ours, we can actually set it on our website, you know, for us here, we have reviews. If you want to enable reviews and then there's extras, which is, um, this is specifically for the flatsome theme. So this is really cool. We have a custom bubble. If you want to add in a video to your product, you can have, you can have a video, you can have all this other really cool stuff and kind of go through that and mess around with it. Here we have a light box or a new tab, etc. but I'm not going to go through this. This is, you can just read through this and kind of understand how this works here. I'll go to general. So I think everything is all ready to go. So, E phones, everything is good here. I will click on publish and let's take a quick look at our product. All right. Awesome. So here we have e phones. You can see it's on sale from 500 to 600. We have the description. We have 10 in stock and here you can see the gallery. So people can actually go to the gallery. They can open it in a light box and scroll through pretty cool. If we scroll down right here, we have various social media icons where people can share it to their favorite social networks. Here we have the description. So the fiber made in USA, you know, I'm sorry, we should have done carbon fiber, carbon fiber guys, my bad. <laughs> and then we have reviews. So someone can leave a, um, you know, leave a five star review saying awesome. Now you can also have the option to have these moderated. So if you have a bunch of trolls trolling your website, you can moderate these comments as well. All right. So congratulations. We actually made this product. Now let's, before we go on to the next one, let's quickly touch base on the theme customizer. So I'm going to show you really quickly on how to design this page right here. So right here we have customize and we have product page. So remember I told you the theme customizer kind of controls everything outside of the actual, um, the builder. So we can actually create a custom product page from scratch. However, I'm making a whole separate tutorial for that. Cause I can take another 30, 40 minutes and I don't want to bring it in this video, but I will have another video for you. So let's just say, for instance, I, I want to add a header right here. So right here, you can see that we have a product header. We can have, you know, different colors. You can have this image here. So you can kind of see how I'm, I, I can, you know, adjust things, uh, maybe right here, uh, we can have something like a, a, a right sidebar where we can add different widgets. We'll talk more about that when we have our product page here, we can have like a stacked product layouts, a wide gallery, huh? a wide gallery. So something very wide 
Here we have a right custom sidebar with full height, etc. But uh, I'm just gonna leave this for something like uh, no sidebar for now. Scrolling down here, we have product image styles. So you can have the images on the right side, something you know like that. Um, the text alignments, we can align it in the center. So now you see it's in the center. Uh, we can have the different style. So flat, minimal. One thing to know here is that flat, it actually makes these like rounded, something like that, or you change the default. So you can kind of go through these right here and kind of like a product tabs. These are the ones at the bottom. You can kind of go through these and mess around with these. So for example, right here, uh, I think I changed my description to, I think mine looks like this right here. So I changed mine right here. So something like that. You can see mine's full width. And the only thing that I really changed here was the color, which is in the theme customizer. So, and then people can actually scroll through my products right here too, which is, you know, pretty cool. So uh, what you can do here is just kind of go through this, mess around with it. Now we can't scroll because we only have one product. So we need to add more, but uh, I just want to kind of introduce you all to this section where you can kind of add, you know, add stuff here. You can even add a transparent header and, you know, have, bunch of fun here, etc. So I'm gonna take that off really quick, have this title. And uh, yeah, so you can kind of go through this and uh, have fun with it. Uh, again, I'm not going to go through each and every setting, you can kind of just go through these and mess around with them. And you can kind of get a better understanding of what all of these do. Sometimes it takes a while for some change from some changes to, you know, happen. So I'll just leave it like this, and click on publish. All right, so this right now is my new product. So this is how it looks like. And it looks really professional. It looks clean. Here, I'll click on add to cart. And it's been added to the cart, etc. Now, the reason why it doesn't display that little drop down thing like my other website, this one right here, is because we need to actually have that in the header. So uh, I'll talk more about that when we talk about the header. But uh, that's, that's why it doesn't pop up automatically. But let's go ahead now and create another product. So I've shown you all how to create a simple product. Let's now create a variable product. So a variable product is a little different here. So right here we have these camo headphones and now I have size and I have color. So let's go ahead and make a variable product now. So right here, the shortcuts plus new and product. So I'll just do the same thing. Camo headphones, camo headphones. And then here, I'll just put in some uh, description. Now right here under product data, we'll select variable product. And you notice right here how everything disappeared and that is quite okay. You'll go right here and click on attributes and attributes are basically, or okay, attributes or attributes. You let me know in the comments what it is. I'll just say attributes. I'm, I'm not really sure here. I think it's attributes. I think attribute is when you want to like salute someone, right? And attribute is like a material or like a, uh, a, um, a category or something like that, right? So anyways, here I'll click on add. So what attribute do you want to add? So maybe something like size, how many sizes? Well, I want small and this next button is above the enter sign. So you'll see your enter keyboard. There's a little dash, right? But you're going to backspace hold shift and press the button or the button above the backslash or the enter or whatever, and it'll give you that symbol. Here, I'll do large. And that's it. And I wanna click on use for all variations. So essentially, I want to use this for all of the variations that I'm going to create for this product. Still with me? All right, just, just stay with me here. Save attributes. This is actually the most confusing thing in the entire tutorial is variable products. But once you understand it, it's a piece of cake. All right, I promise. Now let's add one more. So we have size, maybe you want to add color, right? So here, color. I'll put white, the dash, and blue. And use for all variations and click on save attributes. Next, we're going to click on variations. Variations, there it goes. Click right here and click on create variations from all attributes. Click on go and say yes. Always say yes. Never look at the warning signs. There we go. All right, cool. So now we have a small white, small blue, large white, large blue. 
So simply click on one. Now we need to actually price this and we need to add a picture for it. So I'll click on the image right here for small white. And uh, I'm going to find the white headphones, which is right here, and set variation image. And these are 300 bucks. All right, $300. And that's it. And I'll click on this arrow to close it. And simply go to the next one. Open, image, find the blue, set variation, and then this will be $300. Close. Or there, there, there we go. Close. Here we have large white, so just do it for the next two right here. And remember, you need to add a price. If you don't add a price to one of these, the product will not be able to add to the carts. So WooCommerce is very strict on the price. You need to enter the price for every single one. So here, upload an image, white, and then 300 bucks. And then I'll do the last one right here. So the blue. Pretty fast, huh? We should we should do a contest, you know, variable product uh, variable product creator. That's how much of a loser I am. And then for the product short description, I'll go ahead and just paste in some regular stuff, whatever. Now for um, product image, uh, you're gonna put the image that you want people to see. So I'll just put something like the white one right here. We have it in blue, you know, of course. And this right here is the default form style. So by default, when someone clicks on the product, what do you want the defaults to be set on? Do you want it to be set on small white, or you want it to be set on large white or large blue? It's up to you. Or you can just have no default color. So when they come in the product, um, it's just gonna have, they're gonna have to select what they want. So here I'll just do large white. That's the default one. And then right here, I'll click on headphones, or I'll select headphones. Create a new category, all right? And I will click on publish. So I think we're all ready to rock and roll, guys. Let's 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 take a look here. All right, created it. I'm gonna close that. View the product. Okay, so you can see on the default how large white is default, right? Here, small blue. There it goes. It changes. Small white, large white, large blue. And that's it. So now you have a variable product. And then here, add to the carts. It has been added to the carts. So congratulations. So we have now created a simple product and also a variable product. And to be quite honest with you all, variable products are probably the most confusing things for most beginners. And it's probably the most confusing thing in this tutorial. So once you've done that, you are pretty much a pro at everything. Let's go back to our homepage here. So we made products, right? Now, I kind of want to add them on our homepage. So right here, let's see, right here, no, right here, we'll click on Edit with UX Builder under Edit Page. And we can assign those products to our homepage. Now, there's various ways on how to do this, guys. So we can add products, categories. We can add in all sorts of different styles. So right here, Add Elements. And what we'll do is I will just find Products. So now you can see how WooCommerce created all these new modules for us. So now we have products, product list, product categories, etc. So here are select products. And uh, there's different styles on how you can design your products. So now you can see how the title is bigger, masonry style, lookbook, uh, grid style. I'll just do uh, we'll do we'll do this one here. Okay. And here we can have like an overlay, a shade. So you see that, etc. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna switch over to this website to give you a better kind of picture of this right here. Actually, right here, here we go. So here we have all these products. Now just imagine that we created you know, two products. So here I have a product for phones, I have a product for headphones, and I have a product, I'm sorry, a category for laptops. So right here, I'll go to, I'll go to products, click on products and options, and right now I'm controlling this section right here. So for the style, I can have it like overlay, where it looks like that, or it looks like shade. So you can see from the flatsome theme, I mean, it's beautiful. And you can do this with other themes maybe, but it would require so much coding, it's ridiculous. In fact, this push is exactly what walmart.com uses for their products on their homepage. So we're stealing Walmart's idea, you know, let's. Let's hope we don't get sued.
<laughs> all right so i'm just kidding you won't get sued you won't get sued and then here we have this now the reason why you can't see the price is because the font's black so i might want to change that if i'm using the badge so here we have something like slider and what this what this is is that it creates a slider so um it'll continually slide the products so people can kind of slide through them so that's just something that if you want to add you can have that um you can have different things like change the navigation color the bullets so that would be this right here. So once you add something like for the type, it'll introduce other options for that specific one as well. So uh, for example, um, not a full slider, I don't like the full slider for, for masonry. Uh, it'll add different things for masonry. Like do you wanna you know, show this or that for masonry, et cetera. I think the most common one that you're gonna use is row and maybe the slider. That's pretty much it. And then here we can control the number of columns. So if you want three products, or two products to show, you know, something like that. The def, you can kind of control the def. You know, and some of these, I gotta be honest, I'm just not sure. So it looks like the def is essentially a box shadow. So that's kind of what that's referring to is a box shadow. But I'm gonna go ahead and close this and just leave it like that. So that's basically how you can design your products in the layouts. Now, let's say for example, I just want to display a specific category in this. I just want the headphones to show up or the best selling products to show up. Right here in our category, I can find the category and just put headphones. And that's it. So only the headphones now are going to display. Well, you know what? I just want watches or I want phones. I only want the phones on my front page. So what you can do is just change this title to something like best phones, right? So best phones. And there you go. Now you have a section for phones. You see what I'm doing here? I'm just trying to kind of uh, make you think outside of the box here and then just kind of design it however which way you want it, you know? So there's no right or what, or there's no right or wrong way to do this, guys. It's really up to you. So that's how you can kind of add products to your homepage, all right? So I don't wanna go over that too much, but uh, that's pretty much it. So here, I'll just do row and I'll just do something like three, all right? And here are my products, all right? So these are my products. So you can go through the options and design and decorate them. So with this right here, this box is saying, let's say for, uh, for instance, you don't want the price to show up. You would just take that off and the price no longer displays. You know, maybe you're those super high, so elegant websites and you don't want to display your price, something like that. So what this is, it just disables it. That's all it does. So you can kind of go through that and have fun and rock and roll. And let's say you want to have, um, for instance, right here, uh, you want to uh, make this right here phones and then your second column you can have it as just your uh, just your laptops right so the first row is going to be phones and the second one is going to be laptops so and then you can say you know what uh, maybe just have three because I only have three products to make it look better you know something like that so or yeah to no I'm sorry total post total post four total post four and then columns three my bad so then you'll have three products displayed. So like that, and uh, yeah, and then you can change the, uh, the animation, etc. So you can kind of go through that and have fun and add products to your homepage. You can add products to any part of your website. It can be on your about us page, your contact page. So just get creative, right? So let's keep going here. So I've shown you all how to add products to the homepage and let's make this section right here. So let's go ahead and click on this right here. And we're gonna go ahead and go to Flatsome Studio so we're going to find the uh, sign up and I'll find the newsletter right here. So I'll import this and I'll click on start. All right. So essentially right now I'm adding this newsletter in now, right now you can see that we need a contact form. So we need to install a plugin for that. So let's click on updates and I'll click on close. So the next plugin that we're going to install is a plugin that allows us to have people subscribe and also contact us, which is very important. So right here, let's go to dashboard. We'll go to plugins and go to add new. Right here, you're gonna type in contact form seven. And this is the plugin right here. You'll click on install now and click on activate. All right, and there's one other plugin that you might need. Uh, you might need the MailChimp for, for uh, Contact Form 7. So right here, add new. You can type in MailChimp and we'll scroll down right here and 
This right here is Contact Form 7 extension from MailChimp. So you'll click on Install Now and activate. Now, for those of you who don't have an email list, I have a full another tutorial on MailChimp. MailChimp is a free email provider that allows you to create some really nice email campaigns and it's for free. Uh, I'm not gonna cover it in this video because that video is an hour and a half long and I don't want to cover email marketing in this video, obviously. So that's the plugin that you're gonna need. So you're gonna go ahead and go watch my other tutorial MailChimp if you decide to use uh, this extension, which I think most of you would want and then you'll come back to this video and you can kind of connect them, et cetera. So you do need an API key and you get that with your MailChimp account. But uh, anyways, right here, we have contact and contact forms. So if you don't wanna use MailChimp right now, it's pretty simple. This is your new contact form. So right here, I'll click on edit. Okay, and uh, right here, I'll select form and I'll just put your email. And that's it. We'll just delete all this and that's it. And click on save. So this is going to be our subscribe form. So right here, I'll change this to subscribe, subscribe and click on save. So essentially what I'm doing is I'm creating a form for people to subscribe on, right? Let's go ahead right here and click on add new. And we're going to make a contact form now. So people can send us our wonderful emails and complain and everything about us. So right here, contact form. Now you'll see these different options again, and this is what your form is gonna look like. So people can enter their name, their email, the subject, their message, and they can send it. You'll actually see this more up close when we actually add it to our website. So it'll look something like this right here. I'll go to my contact page on this website. It'll look like this right here. So your name, your email, subject, your message, and then they can send. And it'll go directly to your email box, which is really cool. So um, it's amazing how technology has changed so much, guys. It, it really is crazy. So let's go back to our website right here and let's add the contact for um, the add the subscribe box. Sorry. Here, I'll click on edit with UX Builder. You guys can tell I'm not on a script. Uh, you probably watch other YouTube videos where they're a lot very clear and uh, they're on a script and they're fake. So <laughs> I'm not. Uh, anyways, right here, I'll click on contact form seven. Select the form. You'll see subscribe and contact form and we'll click on subscribe. Next, we'll go ahead and add in this section right here. So last minute deals, and we added a countdown timer with products, and then we added that again, and we added our blog, and then our Instagram, and then we're done. This is gonna be really quickly, so let's speed up the process here, guys. So I'm gonna click on add elements, find the title, right? Find the title. I want to make this centered. And here, this will be uh, on sale products. Apply. Now let's find the countdown timer. Well, maybe let's make this bigger really quickly. Options, make this bigger, apply, add elements, uh, type in countdown. And uh, countdown to what? So I'm gonna put 2020. What month of 2020? Well, I'm gonna say uh, the fourth month of 2020. And uh, or let's, let's, let's do the second month, or no, third month, there we go, third month. There we go. So one day, 21 hours and 42 minutes. And uh, we can always change this text right here. So if you don't want to say weeks, you can change it to weeks or you can take out weeks or whatever you want to do there. But um, that's my countdown timer. Here I'll click on apply. And then right here, or actually here, I'll click on add elements and type in products again. So products. And then here I'll click on on sale. So Whenever you put a product on sale, you can actually put on sale right here and it'll go ahead and grab your on sale products. So here I'll click on apply. And then of course you can go ahead and design this uh, however you want it to look, et cetera. So uh, I think push was the one I used, I used push. So there you go. So only the on sale products will display right here, which is really cool because now you have this kind of different, uh, you know, you have different categories on your homepage for this and that. And um, you can see on here, how on my demo websites, I just I just grab random products, guys, for total purposes. So I just put in anything right there. But you can create an on sale category, and that would work just fine. Next, let's go ahead and move on to the next section because we already talked about products. So you can kind of list whatever you want here, and I'll add in a new element, and this will be the blog posts. So here, blog posts. 
Now, we haven't done blog posts yet, so we'll talk about that in just a little bit when we're done with the page, but blog post is super easy. And then here you can always style the blog post to make them look however you want, um, you know, but I'm not gonna really cover that just yet because we only have a featured image for it. And the last thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna add an Instagram. So right here, plus, and type in Instagram, Instagram feed. And then here you can have different styles of, uh, you need to add in um, a username first. So here I'll apply it. Okay. So it looks like here that they have this Instagram. I guess this is just a regular Instagram. So you're gonna put your hashtag in your username. And I only want maybe around five images on this page. So not, not too much, you know, something, something easy. So you guys are doing a really good job. You have your homepage, you have products. We do need to add our shop page to the website, but before we do that, let's finish the rest of the website with our about us and contact us page. We need to add some plugins onto the website, such as changing the font, like we talked about. Now you're gonna come across these notices on WordPress. Guys, just close them. They're so annoying. <laughs> you know, the developers are just trying to make money off you guys. That's really what's what's happening here. So right here in our plugins, we'll go to add new. And we're gonna go ahead and install some plugins that we need. So one of them is called Google Fonts. And this is the one that I use. Now there's so many fonts out there. Like there's there's easy Google fonts. There's so many fonts. The one I used was um, this one right here, Google Fonts Topography. And you know, once you're done with the tutorial, you can venture off and use any which plugin you want, etc. Here, I'll click on add new again. And we're gonna add in another one. Next, we're going to install a plugin called Woo Sidebars. This one right here. This plugin is pretty important. This will actually give you a lot more customization and add presets for your product pages and also your shop pages. So let's go ahead and click on add new again. We're going to install just one or two more plugins. So the next plugin that we're going to install is called Wishlist. So this will let people wishlist products. And this is this is it right here. Y I T H WooCommerce Wishlist. So here I'll click on install now and click on activate. Now also if you're using MailChimp, which I think most of you might be using, there's one more that we need to install. So right here, click on add new, and this is going to be MailChimp WooCommerce. Now this is actually a really cool plugin. So what this is going to do is this is going to automatically uh, take the email addresses from people who buy your products and store them in your email list. So this is the plugin right here. It's called MailChimp for WooCommerce. Click on install and activate. So right now MailChimp's prompting you to go to their websites, but I'm not gonna do that just yet. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and ignore that. So let's go ahead and go to our dashboard right here. And you might get some ads or not advertisements, just notices from the developers saying that uh, something's changed on your website like this right here. I'm gonna close these because I want it to look like this right here. So let's go ahead now and visit our website and let's go to the theme customizer really quick. So one thing I want to note before we make the about us and the contact page is that uh, right here we have Google fonts and we have some different settings right here. So here we have basic fonts and we have font family, heading fonts and button fonts. So what this is going to do is let's say you have this header right here, right? So this is a header text. What font do you want this to be? Well, I want this to be Poppins. I like Poppins. So now you'll see that this has changed right here. So this font has changed. So if you want your base topography to be something else, you can do something like Georgia. And you'll see that your base right here is changing. So here I'll do something like Poppins again. A big tip guys is don't have too many fonts on your website. You might only want one or two, two maximum. And then right here for buttons, you can go ahead and select another one for your buttons, etc. But Poppins and um, the base are going to be the ones I want. So I'll leave that and set it to publish. I want to change these button colors. So let's go back right here really quick and go to style. Here I will click on colors. So we have these main colors right here. And for every module, you're going to see that, okay, the primary color is gonna be black. Now, if I select a secondary color, that can be something like uh, whatever color you want it to be. So when you're building out your modules, 
it's going to make you assign a specific color for that specific button. So I actually want this to be something like, um, you know, I can change it to black. Now what I did in my other website was I added a white border. So I taught you earlier how to make borders right here. So you can add borders around buttons. And I did that because I wanted to create that elegant look, but I also want the button to be visible. So here you can see I had added this really stylish buy now. And when I hover over it, the background is white. That'll kind of notify them to, to purchase it, something like that. You know, we're, we're marketing here. So we want to make sure that our buttons kind of correlate to, um, you know, what we want people to do. So uh, when you're actually building your websites, you want to go ahead and make sure that you assign the specific colors to whatever parts of the website you're trying to, you know, achieve, etc. And if you've noticed right here that the font has changed throughout our website. So that's why we need a plugin to kind of change the fonts for everything. So that's pretty much it. You know, that's how we can change the colors and also change the topography of our websites. Now let's go ahead and create the about us page. Now guys, this is going to be really quick and fast. So on my rent, on my page right here on my about us, I just grabbed a template and I modified it slightly. So let me show you an example. Now I'm not going to go into detail on the about and contact page because I think by now, you have a good idea on how to make the website already. So let's just go ahead and jump into this. Oh, my bad, my bad. Here I'll go to edit and go to edit the UX builder. So we're now gonna do the about us and the contact. And after that, we're going to jump into the theme customizer and talk more about the shop page, which we haven't uh, really covered just yet. So right here, add elements, Flatsum Studio. So right here under the about us section, we have this little banner right here. So I'm going to import this and I'll click on start. So you can see here what I did. I took this image, but I didn't like the bottom part of this one right here and that's okay. So I just decided to get rid of this. So right here in your section, I'll delete that. Now, remember, whenever you make a page, you're going to make it full width. So right here under the gear icon, you'll click on that templates and full width. And there you go. So now I have this header right here. Next, I'll go ahead and go back, or I'll apply that change, add elements, Flatsum Studio, and here under the About Us section, I actually used another section that I liked. I like this section right here, Import and Start. So here I'll go ahead and show you really quickly how this looks. So here I have this section, and on my website, on the new one, it's this one. So you notice right here, all I did was I just changed the text, I made it dark, and I just changed the images. So when you're building your website, try not to look at the images too much because I know for a beginner's standpoint, it can really influence you and think, oh, look, this is this is for a clothing website. I can't use this section. Of course you can. Just change the colors, change the images, and there you go. Now you have an electronics about us page, right? And uh, right here, we have another one. So team members. So over here, add elements, Flatsum Studio, and I select team members. Now guys, you are more than welcome at this point, you are more than welcome to go through and pick anything that you want. So here I'll just, uh, I'll grab, I'll grab uh, this one right here, the dark one. Now a good strategy for you guys building out websites that are complete amateurs is usually when you go to websites, it's the, the sections are always categorized. So let me explain really quick because I just want you to know this. So right here, background, no background, backgrounds, no backgrounds, backgrounds, no backgrounds, and then background or, or images, something like that. So usually when you're building out your website, you're going to come across websites that are kind of like, you don't want to have just white everywhere. So you need to take the white off because the white can create boredom. It can create people to leave your website. So usually right here, I have image, white, dark, new section, and then add in another section. So you want to kind of not add as much white as possible because that's really going to make people think that your site's boring. They're going to say the site's boring. I'm leaving. I don't want to buy anything. Not unless you're going for that like Apple look, that all white look kind of thing. Then that's your goal or that's your criteria or whatever you want to do. So anyways, let's go back over here to my about us page. So here you'll need to enter in the images. So right here we have images and here change media. And even on the files that I gave you, there are pictures. So just take a picture, use the image, and there you go. 
And then you can always change all of the, the, the settings right here. You can add a TikTok, a Facebook. Who uses TikTok here? If you guys have TikTok, leave it in the comments below. Sure, why not? You know, I'll check it out. So here we have team members. So at this point, you would just simply go ahead and add in the media. So here, and then right here, change media. And it's that simple, guys. Simple, 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 easy, easy. And then you can adjust this, et cetera. You can change it with all these options to the left side. I'm sure by now you guys are getting comfortable with this. And then here you can see that I added this section right here, which is the logos section. So apply, add elements, Flatsum Studio. I believe I use the testimonial section right here. The testimonial section, and I used this section right here. And I think I just changed the the, the background. Yeah, I think I did. Or no, did I? No, it's this one right here. Here we go. Import this one, and I'll import the images. The images are really cool that Flatsum gives us the images because quite honestly, guys, when you're working on your website, you're gonna find that images are the most annoying things out there when it comes to web design because images are hard to scale, they're hard to size, and if they're big images, they can slow down your website. All right, so you can see here how this section imported. I'll click on updates. And let's close this and just take a quick look at our About Us page now. So the About Us page, you can see everything is good and we have a beautiful professional About Us page. Lastly, let's do the contact page. So let's finish the website before we move on to the last section. So we'll go ahead and just grab a template and we're going to embed the contact form onto this so people can actually contact us uh, with problems or if they wanna tell you you're amazing or whatever they wanna do. I know customer service can be quite annoying because I've been there, guys. I've licked the pot clean, so I know all about that fun stuff. So here I'll go ahead and find, uh, let's see, contact. There we go, contact. And um, right here, I just grabbed this whole section right here. So I'm gonna click on import. All right, and again, if you wanna make this full width, simply click on the gear icon, and right here under templates, you'll select page full width. And here I'll click on apply and updates. So now we have this as our page. Now we don't have our form right here. So here I'll click on the form. And remember earlier how we created that form? Well, right here, you'll just simply select the contact form and voila. And if you notice right here, the colors are being applied because on the actual theme customizer, it's sort of influencing this right here and it's changing the color. So we have your name, your email, subject, your message, and then send. And uh, right here, I don't want this, get that out of here. And also right here for maps. Now, Google recently introduced a new update where you have to pay for the API. So for this specific tutorial, I will not be covering maps because I don't want to create an API and all that stuff, but I'll make a separate video for it. So be sure to check out my channel. I'll be talking about how to add uh, Google Maps to your website. It's really easy. Just know that you do have to pay for it now and before it was free. So darn them or you can use Google Maps, but then again, I will have a whole nother video on that. So I'm gonna delete that for now and delete this whole column. And then there you go. Here we have company details. You can put in whatever you want. So text editor, and you can say, you know, we are amazing. And that's it. So here, apply and updates. And we are, see, uh, uh, we are done. Woo, congratulations. So as of right now, you guys now have a fully functional website. You know, you have the home, the about us, the contact page. You have a contact form where people can contact you. And on the home page right here, we have everything that we need. So we have the, the, the page, everything looks really good. So let's go ahead now and move on to the next section where we're gonna talk a little bit more of the technical aspects, such as the theme customizer, the shop page, and also the blog. All right, so you guys are doing really good. So congratulations, get yourself a beer. Now let's talk about the menu, the theme customizer, and I'll also talk about how to add a really quick blog. So to add a blog post, it's really, really simple. So right here under plus new, you'll just go ahead and click on post. Now this is how you can make standard blog posts for your e-commerce website. And this is actually a really good idea because you can talk about like top 10 best this, top 10 best that, etc. So here I'll do top 10 best electronics for gaming. And then right here, you can add in some demo content. So I'll just 
paste in some demo content. And this right here is a different editor. So it's called Gutenberg. And I will have another video for this, but it's pretty simple. So for example, right here, let's say you want to add in an image here. I'll go ahead and grab one from my media library. And this is something that you can do to talk about products or to, you know, introduce different things about your website. And once you're done blogging, the most important thing is right here, it says featured image. You'll select a featured image. Now this is the image that people are going to see when they see your blog. So for example, I'll grab something that has to deal with computers or something like that. And I'll click on publish right here and publish. And that's it. I've made a blog post. And if you want to see your blog post right here, just click on view post. And this is it. So here we have the blog post, and then we have some content. We have the image and it looks really, really cool. Now the theme customizer can kind of change how this looks. So I just want to talk about the blogging first before I jump into the theme customizer, because they kind of go hand in hand. Also, you can add categories to your blog posts. So right here we have top 10 best. So you can categorize your blogs the same way that you categorize products. It's the same exact style. So here I'll click on updates. And that's pretty much it. So right here, if I go to visit sites and I go to my blog, every blog post that I publish will be listed right here. So this is where they're going to display. That's why we created a blog page and assigned it to our specific blog post there. So that's just a quick way on how to add blogs to your website. Next, let's talk about the menu. So we actually have the shop page, the account page and everything else. Let's add that to the menu before we jump into the theme customizer. So right here, I'll click on dashboard. Now, when you install WooCommerce, it created pages for us automatically. So right here, appearance and menus. Now click on view all, and you'll see that we have some other pages. Now we have the cart to the checkouts, and we also have the shop page. So I'll add those to the carts and I'll rearrange this. So I'll add it like this. I'll put the, um, I'll also need my account, so my account as well. I'll put my account next to the contacts, and then I'll put the cart and the checkout below that, just like that. And then here I will click on Save Menu. Okay, and now let's take a look at our websites. So now we have the Shop page. If I click on Shop, all the products that we create will be listed right here. Here I'll click on My Accounts. This is the dashboard for your users. So it'll look just like this right here. And you can edit this. So right here under edit page, you can edit this with the UX builder as well. So just like we made other stuff, we can add to this page and add whatever we want. Here we have the cart page. So right now I have things listed in my carts. And then also we have the checkout. Now the theme customizer has different styles and how you can design this. Also, you can actually go ahead and use the builder itself. So you can customize this in two ways. You can use the builder or you can use the preset options in the theme customizer. So that's basically how we can add, you know, the shop to our page, etc., or shop to our menu. Let's now talk about the theme customizer, which is one of the more important aspects of this tutorial. So here we have the header. So basically in short, the theme customizer controls everything the page builder cannot. So here we have the header. We have WooCommerce options. We have the footer. We have different menu styles, widgets, and sharing social icons. Now, essentially what the theme customizer does is that it styles the website in different ways. So first let's talk about the header, which is probably one of the more important parts of this video. So let's first talk about the preset option. So here we have different options. So here you can see I added some text earlier. We have some social icons. Now, if you want to adjust this, it's very simple. We have these little bottom gadgets right here. Now, HTML blocks, that's just text. So right here, you can see I added some text. If I want to move the text, I'll just take this text and I'll drag it right here next to the main menu. And now you'll see that it says use Daryl for 10% off. And if I want to edit that, I'll just click on this. And right here, you can see in between these two brackets, you would just type whatever you want. So here I'll go ahead and type in something else. I'll just say, uh, here we go best e-commerce tutorial, All right? All right, yeah, yeah, good, okay. And I can drag this back to over there and you'll see that it's right there. Now I can also drag in a checkout button like that. I can add in a, a languages, ooh, that's a good one, languages, huh? So here we have different languages. Now this has to deal with another plugin, but don't worry, I will have another video for that because 
Uh, the language plugins, that, that can get very uh, tricky and advanced. So I don't wanna use languages for this video, sorry. And the next time guys, here we have wishlist. So I can put wishlist right here and I can change the style. So now you can see the theme customizer can design everything. So here you see that's on the top right here. We can change the style of it, etc. So the header options or the header builder is pretty straightforward. You know, uh, personally you can have up to three headers. So right here we have, I'm, I'm sorry, three bars. So we have the top bar, the header main, and we have the header bottom. And you can just add in stuff wherever you want. So you can just keep drag and dropping. And as you can see, you can make this header extremely diverse. So there's a lot you can do with this header. So with this header builder, it makes things a lot easier. And I prefer this because other themes have to design headers with the page builder, and that becomes a responsive nightmare. So uh, with this right here, it's very responsive out of the box. So that's just a quick way on how you can design your header. You can move stuff around, etc. And uh, if you guys need a logo, you guys can go to fiverr.com. So there's a link in the description below to fiverr.com. So this right here is fiverr.com. And I do have a coupon code if you guys do decide to use this website. Now just type in logo and you'll have these freelancers make an amazing logo for you for as little as $5. So let's say for instance, your budget's $5. So the maximum you'll spend is $5. Here you have tons of people who will make really high quality logos. You know, I've seen other videos on YouTube where people try to get like free logos. Now guys, that's not practical. And if you're anything serious about your business, you wouldn't mind spending five bucks to get a custom made logo. In fact, I got my logo on this website. So uh, I'll leave the coupon code in the description below. You guys can, I think, get an additional 10% off your logo if you wanna use that. But uh, that's really up to you. But please use a custom logo. Don't use like a free logo maker or those free websites because the logo is not gonna look good and thousands of other people have used that same logo. So it's just not practical. It's really, really not. So you can kind of go through the options right here for the header and you can just kind of mess around with this. Now, if you want this little button right here, how it kind of drops down, you will need to add the cart. So right here, we have the cart button. So make sure you have the cart uh, if you decide to want this feature where it drops down, where if you add something to the cart, it's gonna automatically pop up for your visitors, which I actually prefer, I, I like it, I think it looks really cool. So I'll just click on this one right here. You know, I just wanna add a, a preset. I'll click on this one and uh, that's it. So I'll just leave it like this right now because I, I just think this is here actually, let's take a look at this one here. There we go, we'll use this one for now. All right, so this one's the one I'm using for now. And here I'll click on publish. So again, the header is extremely diverse. There's a lot of stuff you can do. So here are all the options for the header. Now, each of these, these options right here, they all control the header. So for example, you wanna upload your logo, you can just remove this and upload an image and your logo will display right here. If you wanna change the logo position, you can change it, or you can use the preset options. So again, each of these controls the actual style of the module. So for example, cart you can have a, a different looking cart. So see right here, we have the little bag with the number. You can add a, a shopping cart or a basket, you know, something like that. There you go. So that's pretty cute, right? You know, it's, it's cute. And then you can change, um, actually the car style will leave it as drop down. I prefer that. Cause I think the other ones, um, actually, you know what? The other ones aren't that bad at all. You know, I, I do I do think they're they're not bad, but I prefer just the drop down because the drop down just makes it a, a lot easier. So you can kind of go through the car style and go through these but um, you'll have to save it and then close it. And then you can kind of mess around with that and you know, you can get comfortable with it, et cetera. But I'm just gonna leave this for now because I think this right here is standard. Go back in over here. So again, you know, I think by now you can kind of get an idea just by going through these, adding your social media icons. So all this stuff right here, it just designs the modules. That's all it does right there, all right? So I don't wanna go through each and every one because you guys can probably get a better understanding of this just by messing around with it. And now you kinda, you know, now you have a good uh, understanding of it. So let's go back over here. Now we have style. Style is basically the colors of the website. Now, when you're designing your website, you're gonna see that the modules have a primary, secondary, success color, and alert color. So for example, right here, I have the button to primary and also secondary. I forgot which one I chose, but it, once you're building your modules and your website, you can assign these specific colors. So for example, the success color, you can make it blue. So if you assign something with uh, the success color, it's going to be blue. So that's how you can assign colors to your uh, website. Also right here, the link color. So when someone clicks on the links, it'll be that color. 
when I hover over it, the links will be black. But if I change this, when I hover over the links, it'll be a different color. So essentially what this is doing is it's just changing the color. So here, the shop colors, the add to cart color, the sale bubble color, the new bubble color, the review stars, you can change the review stars to any color you want. So uh, here on the shop page, let's go ahead and go over there really quick. We have this stars as black. So we can change the review stars, the sale bubble right here, we can change the sale bubble color to anything that you want. So again, you have full control over virtually every single part of the shop. Now, the reason why this is a, uh, a big pro is because other themes don't have these features. So again, this is why you probably want to stick with Flatzone when you're building out e-commerce websites. So let's go ahead and go back right here. I don't want to jump over too much. I'm just kind of giving you uh, an example. And they have other things you can check out like topography and the image light box, et cetera. So when you're building your websites, these specific sections correspond to whatever you're looking at. So right here with the blog. So this is going to correspond to the blog. So the blog layouts, you can have uh, the post layout as normal in line two columns. And what you can do here is go on over to the blog section and just kind of, you know, mess around with it. See what, see what happens. So I actually like that. I like the post layout like this right here. I think that's a little bit cleaner because you can have several blog posts that looks really, really cool. All right, here I'll click on publish. So that's basically a quick run on of like the blog and everything that you can do. Uh, blog archive, that means blog categories. So this will be kind of how it looks like on the category pages. And then single post, which is when you click on the post, etc. Here we have WooCommerce. Uh, there's some options right here. So we have store notice. Now this is going to basically enable a store notice at the bottom of the websites. And that basically tells people that whatever you want to tell them. See right here, this is a demo store for testing purposes only. Going back here, product catalog. So this is where you can kind of design everything. So this is where you can kind of design the layout, design the style. So here we have, you know, a different style or you have like the masonry style or you can just do like the basic brick style. And then I actually like this right here, force image heights. So what this is going to do is that if you have products with different image sizes, Flatsum will automatically make those images the same height as all of the other images to make sure that it looks really clean and nice. Here you can do something like products per page, products per row. So if you want two products per row, you can have two products per row. And then you can change it for mobile as well. Here for the header, we can add a different header style to make it look really clean and really nice. And then we have other options right here. So go through these options and see what you like. Uh, again, you can spend hours on this because there's just different ways on how you can style your stuff. Like here we have add to cart, select options, etc. cetera. So, uh, at this point, you can kind of get an idea what these do. So for example, sales bubble, it'll change that. That looks ugly. You can have it like that. I think the circle is the best. See how it's circle now? And then here it's squared. So um, yeah, you know, you can have fun designing your, your page right here. I'll talk more about how to create a custom shop page when we're done with the theme customizer. Now also right here, we have product page. So here we have a product page and you can design the product page. So here you can add in a header, you can add in you know, the title, something like that. Um, you can have, uh, you know, you can virtually add in anything that you want to add here. So all these options right here, they control the actual product page. So if you want to you know, design your product page, you can go ahead and do that. Now I will have another tutorial on how to make a custom product page from scratch. Now to do this, it would take a little bit longer and I'm gonna have a separate tutorial for that, but that's only if you wanna have a completely custom product page built from scratch and not use the template. So um, make sure to subscribe because I will be having a video on that as well, but I'll just leave it like this for now. I think this is fine right here. I think this is, um, you know, I think this, this looks good and I'm gonna leave it at that for now. So it looks pretty cool and it looks really professional. So I'll leave it like this and click on publish. All right, and the My Account, again, you can change the My Account page. So these all correspond to the pages. Now there is one that I do wanna talk about, which is the checkout page. So the checkout page, you can make this simple, default, or focused. I prefer focused. I think this is more simple and it just kind of makes people, uh, you know, okay, cool, check out, go, place order, done. And then right here, you can do optional or hidden. 
So for example, let's say you don't want the address. You can just hide the address, so they don't have to fill out the address. And if you want the phone required, you can make the phone required. And um, that's basically you know a quick rundown on how you can design the, the checkout page. And the same thing goes for the cart page as well. So with the cart page, you can do the same exact thing. So you can do something like simple. Let me go ahead and go back here. So let me go back right here because we need to go to the cart page just to kind of show you where, it, where it's being applied to. So here we have simple, we have focused, and I do like the focused because what it does is that it takes off the menu and it kind of forces users to kind of go through checkouts. And now they can always hit the logo button and go back, but here you can design the cart page from scratch and just have a really cute, nice looking uh, cart page. So again, the theme customizer does control all these features. So now that I've talked about that, uh, let's go ahead and talk about uh, layouts, you can change the layout of your website to boxed, framed, which just looks like this right here, or width, full width like that. And then you can go ahead and go through these options. These are the layouts of the websites. So that's what that's referring to. Uh, pages right here, I'm not going to go through that. That's really not important. Portfolios, I'm not really going to cover portfolios in this video. Uh, menus, we talked about that. Uh, widgets, we will talk about that uh, after the footer. Homepage settings, you know what that is. And then the share icons, just changing the share icons on the website, etc. So uh, that's a quick rundown, guys, of the actual theme customizer. Now let's talk about one of the more important aspects, which is the footer. So let's scroll down here. Here we have the footer. Now the footer is actually pretty important. So uh, this theme gives us two different footers. So we have footer area one, and we also have footer area two, and then we have the absolute footer, which is this section. So this has up to three footers. Now, usually websites only have one footer. So I want to disable footer area one. I want to get rid of that. And I want to enable footer area two and give it a background. Now, the reason why nothing's there because we haven't added in any widgets. So let's now add some widgets to our footer. So going back over here, we have widgets. And click on footer area two. So you can have more than one footer but most websites only have one footer. So adding a widget, so what are widgets? Well, widgets are basically little things that you can add to your websites that come with WordPress that add some sort of functionality. So for example, uh, most people do something like a text widget, right? And this can be like how we got started. And then you'll put in some text right here. So on my demo websites or on my other website, so on my demo website right here, I have a text footer right here. So this is a text one. So it's just simply text. And this can be something like, you know, how we got started, about us, maybe give them your address, whatever you want to do. So that's done. That's pretty much it. Let's add another widget. And over here, you see I've added the blog widget. So this is just showing the blog. Now you can add whatever you want. You can add pages. You can add products. I think it's called post, right? Yeah, find some recent posts and then our blog. And then you can also show the thumbnail too. So you can have the picture of the actual blog post, which is, it looks really professional, looks really good. Here, I'll add another widget. Here we can add products. So if you wanna list a products, you can list products by price, uh, product categories, however you want to display your products, but I'll just put regular products. So just whatever, just products. And I wanna show up to five products. Now I only have two products on this website, but on my demo website, I have many, so I can show as many as I want. So uh, that's how I would show that. Now also right here, I'll go ahead and click on done. Here I'll add a widget, and I believe I have a sign-up form, or MailChimp sign-up form. Now there is a plugin that you need to install, it's free, it's MailChimp for WordPress. Now if you want to go ahead and watch my MailChimp video to kind of get your email marketing campaign started up, you are more than welcome to do that. But uh, this would be the plugin that you would need. It's called MailChimp for WordPress. And then here I'll just you know add it in. Now, once you actually get the form and you add in your API, the form will display just like this. So you need the API key. And uh, once you add in the API, it's really simple. You just copy and paste the API key and then you get the new contact form. So that's how you can kind of create a really nice uh, custom footer. And you can mix and match stuff if you don't wanna have the the, the sign up form, you can add in something like pages maybe. So this right here, you know, pages, you know, uh, pages. So these are a list of all your pages, which will help users navigate your websites. 
So that's just a, a way on how you can design your footer and you can get customizable and all that really fun stuff. So that was just a quick rundown of how to design the footer and also run thing for layouts. I'm sorry, for, for the footer right here, we can go ahead and scroll down and go to the absolute footer. So the absolute footer is this one on the bottom right here. So for example, if I want to center this and change it to black, we can do it like that, or you can change whatever color. You can put whatever text you want, and you can add even more text right here. And then you can add in like a, a, a scroll to up button. So this would control the button. You can put it on the left side or on the right side, and then you can put in more text in the footer. So there's so much you can do with this. So you can have a ball and you can have fun and drink beer and design your footer and have a bunch of fun. So that's basically a quick rundown guys of the theme customizer. So you can see how the theme customizer is very important. It controls the, the header of your website, the footer, the shop page. It also controls the my accounts. It controls a lot of other parts of your websites. Okay, next let's talk about your terms and conditions and privacy policy. So you're selling on your website and you wanna make sure that you are protected. Now in the theme customizer, you might've noticed right here under the, um, I believe it is under the cart page. So let me see if I can find it really quick. So WooCommerce, we have the checkouts. Yeah, the checkout page, right? We have the option to set a privacy policy page and a terms and conditions page. So what you wanna do here is you want to go ahead and make a page specifically for your privacy policy and your terms and conditions. And this will help you against chargebacks. Now in the link of the, or in the description of this video, there is two websites that will give you free templates for a generator to create a terms and conditions and a free privacy policy. So let me just run you through on how to make people check it because uh, this is a very important part of the video because this will protect you against certain chargebacks. And if you're American and you live in the United States, you know everyone out there likes to sue everybody for no reason. So you wanna make sure you have at least some protection, right? So let's do that really quickly. So here I'll close this. Now I'm gonna make my terms and conditions and privacy policy page. So right here under plus new, I'll click on page. Now for these pages, we're not gonna assign them to the menu because people don't really need to see this. Now you can add it to the footer of your menu, but I would not add it to the, uh, you know, I would not add it to the main menu. So terms and conditions. And then right here, you can just go ahead and paste the content, whatever you want. Now, right here, you can enter in your company name, your website and URL, and they will go ahead and send you this whole entire template right here that you can use on your websites. So you can use this free of charge. They don't ask for anything. I think that's for donations or something like that. So if you guys are generous and you want to, you know, give someone or give this website a, a donation or something like that, you can do that. But um, I'm just gonna go ahead and paste just random content in here, and then I'll click on publish. Now this same website also has, uh, they have the terms and conditions template as well. And also for those of you who are living in the communist uh, Europe, they have uh, the, the GDPR, ah, cool. <laughs> you know? So they got GDPR for you guys. I'm just kidding, it, it's not communist, I'm, I'm totally lying, all right? So this would be the terms and conditions template that you can use, and you can kind of go through their websites and use it at uh, your own disposal and there you go. So I'll just, you know, grab in some demo content right here and I'll go to plus new and I'll make another page. So I did terms and conditions already, but I'll just pretend that this is privacy policy now. So privacy policy, you, you get what I'm doing here. So just random content and this is my privacy policy, whatever. All right, now let's go back to the websites and under the, um, the theme customizer, we'll click on customize. So this website, again, it's completely free and um, you can kind of just go through it and uh, you know, I'll put it in the description. Um, I'm not associated with this company at all. So if they give uh, weird advice, <laughs> I'm sorry, but I did go through their, 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 their contract. I did read it before the video, so I can see it's legit. It's not like just some, like uh, just a bunch of uh, jargon. So here we'll go to WooCommerce and go to carts and we need to assign that. So basically, I'm sorry, checkout, we'll go to checkout. So it's under the checkout. And right here under privacy policy page, we'll select the privacy policy and under terms and conditions, we'll select terms and conditions. Now, when people are actually purchasing, you'll see right here, they have to click on this box. Now, again, this is really cool because with other themes, you have to buy a plugin, upload the plugin, and it doesn't even correspond to the theme that much, but uh, this right here does. So that's how you can assign uh, this 
page right here. And again, you can make people have to click on that to check out. So that'll protect you because there are dirt bags in the world and they will try to charge back your purchases and tell the bank, hey, I never got my purchase. And they probably did. So when you have a terms and conditions, it'll actually kind of protect you against uh, sellers and it'll also protect yourself as well. All right, we are getting close to the end of this tutorial. So the last thing we're gonna talk about is adding product categories to the menu. And then we'll talk about the WooCommerce settings and payment gateways and you are all done. So you notice that when we created our shop page, that we have specific categories. Now there's no way to link them by default to product categories. So let's say for instance, you designed uh, or you made a category for headphones. Here I'll click on headphones and then go to the headphones category. So here we have this, but the problem is people can't actually go to the headphones category. So there's a really simple fix for this. So all you need to do is find your category of the product and take this link right here and you will copy this. Now in the beginning of this video, you remember we had that custom link in the menu? You remember that? Let's, let's, let's do that now. So here's go to dashboard. So now I'm showing you how to add product categories to your menu, which is pretty important actually. Here we have appearance and we'll go to menus and then we'll find custom links and you'll simply go ahead and paste that URL in there. Just paste the URL, copy and paste guys. And then here, headphones and then click on add to menu. Now also you can just go ahead and add the product categories right here to the menu as well. So that's another way to do it. If you want to do it, you can do it both ways. So for example, here I'll put in phones and I'll do phones and add that to the menu. So there's no right or wrong way to do it. I'm just giving you two ways. I'm just kind of introducing you to think outside of the box because if you wanna add maybe one product to your menu, you can just link one product to your menu using the custom links right here. So I'm just trying to kind of, you know, give you different options for whatever kind of reason. People, everyone has a different website and it's really hard for me to determine what they're trying to do. So let's just click on save and menu. Actually, no, 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 no. We're, we're going to reorganize that. that. That is really ugly. Here we go. There we go. There we go. All right. So here, visit sites. And you notice right here, we have phones. I'll click on phones and there you go. And then headphones, same thing, guys. It is the it achieves the same exact result. So that's how you can add product categories to your menu. So lastly, before we talk about WooCommerce settings and payment gateways, let's talk about actually designing our shop because you can see our shop page is very bland, very boring. We have no widgets. We have no bar. We have nothing. So let's first talk about how to design this page right here. So the first thing we'll do is go on over here to dashboard and you're going to notice that we have something called UX blocks. So UX blocks essentially can override certain pages. So you can make a custom shop page from scratch. Now click on add new and this is going to be shop header. Now, all I want to do with this right here is I want to kind of add a section to my shop. I don't want to redesign it hundred percent, but I just want to add a banner. So here I'll click on publish. So now this section right here is a block and you can assign this block to any part of the website. So here I'll click on UX block. So we need to design this block, right? So right here, I'm sure you've seen the screen before add elements in the Flatsum studio. And right here, I'll click on campaigns. And this can be something like your banner for your shop page. You know, you, again, you can add this to virtually your footer, your header, your shop page, um, your category pages. But I will be having a full another video on product pages and stuff like that for Flatsum. But I chose this one right here, the Black Friday. So here, I'll click on import. And there you go. So right here under the banner, you notice that we have these really cool little background things. So to do that or to change it, you can change it to sliding glass. You can change it to confetti, you know, whatever you want to change it to. So that's pretty cool, right? But I do like the snow. I think the snow was uh, pretty cool. One thing I also want to do is I want to change the width of this. This is too tall for me. So right here, I want to reduce the height to maybe something like, I don't know, what's good. You guys can tell me now, huh? 300, we'll do 300. No, 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 okay, okay. We'll, we'll do 350, around three, 350, something like that. And I'll click on apply and apply. 
Okay, so I just basically made a section for virtually any part of the website. So let me go ahead and explain what we just did here. So here I'll close this. Now you see this short code right here. We have this shop header. Go ahead and copy that. Now I know there's a bunch of weird stuff right here, but don't worry, this is just how it looks. And let's go now to the theme customizer. So visit sites and the shop page. And right here, well, we can just select product category. Okay. And then right here, you're going to see this content right here. So we have shop page header and shop page contents. I want to paste that short code there, the shop header. So now that I place that, this actually is going to change. So what I'll do here is, there we go, there it goes, there it goes, woo, there it goes. So you can kind of see here how you can design uh, specific parts for your shop page. So you can design a completely shop page from scratch if you choose to do that. Now, again, there's a lot of different customizations and things we can do here. So uh, I'm not gonna cover it all in this video, but that's just an example on how you can design your shop page. Maybe I wanna get rid of that button, you know? So here I'll click on publish and then I'll close this. Now, what's really cool here is that you can actually design this right here. Now your users on the website won't see this. Only you will see this because we're logged in. So here I can just say, oh, I wanna make a quick change. You know, I'll just, I'll make a quick change here. I wanna, I wanna get rid of this button. There we go, and then update. And then that's it, guys. The changes have been made live on the website. So it is so damn incredible that we can do this with Flatsum. So now that we have actually done this right here, let's add in some widgets. So what the hell is this shop army? What is this? What does all this mean? Well, let's use my other website to give you a better demonstration of that. Okay, so here's my demo website. And on the left side right here, you see I have these widgets. Now these widgets are the shop sidebar. So right here under widgets on the theme customizer, you'll go to shop sidebar and you can add various widgets. So this right here is a product search, a product filter by price, products one day sale. We have recently reviewed products, recently viewed products, sorry, and we added a video. And this is just a YouTube video. You can just link it in there. That's all I did right there. So now that you kind of get an understanding of the widgets, and again, you can, you know, you can add in other widgets, you can mix and match this. I can add another widget, I can add a cart button. I can get rid of the video if I want to get rid of the video. So here you can see that we have the cart displayed right here. So users can check out maybe earlier. So let's go to our website right here. And now that you kind of, you know, you have an idea, let's go ahead and uh, let's, cu let's customize this. And we'll go ahead and mess around with the shop page or the shop widgets. So over here, we'll go to the uh, widgets and we'll go to shop sidebar and let's just add a widget. So this will be a sh uh, search, product search. Search. And then maybe we got those broke people on the website who have no money at all. So we got to accommodate everybody guys. So filter by price, there you go. Now you can see here how it automatically goes up to 500 max because uh, 500 is the most expensive product we have on the website. Here, add a widget. Uh, wow, you can even add flat some blocks. So you can even have a, you can even assign those blocks. I wonder how that'll look. It'll look pretty terrible actually. Oh, that's actually really cool. Wow, you know, that's really nice actually. You know what, maybe, maybe we should leave this. I, I like that. I like the flat some blocks here. <laughs> it's so responsive, it, I just love it. Uh, here, add a widget. You can add a sign up form. You can add products. So here we'll add more products. And then here I will add in something else. Maybe you can add in a video. So there you go. You can add in the video right there and you would just copy and paste the link and so on and so forth. So I think here now you kind of get an understanding of how to build this. So uh, yeah, have a ball, go have fun. You can just add as many widgets as you want and there's no limit. You can add as many as you want. Just keep in mind that the more you add, the longer the page will stretch out. And if you don't have enough products there, it can look a little awkward, right? So uh, that is a full rundown on how to design the shop page from scratch. You can design uh, the header, you can add all sorts of really cool stuff, widgets, etc. All right, so now it's time for the good stuff. We are going to dive into the WooCommerce settings where we can set shipping, taxes, and also get paid by start accepting credit cards on the internet. So let's go ahead and dive into this. I'm gonna go to my dashboard right here and I'm gonna go ahead and talk about all the WooCommerce settings that are gonna be available to you. 
So right here, first I'll go to WooCommerce and Dashboard. Now one thing I wanna note is that if you see a screen like this right here, where it's telling you to do things, where it's saying adding your first product, you will need to have to go ahead and go through each one. And once you actually go through each one, it'll like give you a check mark. After that check mark, you will then get this dashboard right here, where it'll give you the sales, it'll talk about the average order and all of this stuff. So I know that's annoying, but uh, I don't know if this is a permanent update, but uh, at the time of making this video, you're gonna see this screen. So for example, right here, personalized store, I'll just skip, I'll just skip, skip, and complete the task, and then it'll give you a check mark. Again, once you do all of these right here, uh, it'll bring you to this page right here. So I know that can be a little inconvenient, but again, um, that's out of my control because uh, that's just what it shows at the time of making this video. So first off, what you can do is go ahead of your dashboard and you'll see your current sales. Now also right here under orders, these are, be, these are going to be all the orders that have come through. Now you have the option to uh, check out the order and then you can go ahead and complete the order once you think everything is okay. So for example, this is just for your own good. You can say, all right, you know, we checked everything out, it looks good. I'm gonna go ahead and update this to completed order. So that's just an example of where your orders are gonna be and this is all the information about it, et cetera. And also right here, you can see the fee, et cetera. And also you can have the option to refund as well. Next, we have coupons, which we'll talk about in just a bit. Here we have email customizer. Now the email customizer is a plugin that you can use that can kind of style it to look like this right here. So to get that plugin, I'll go ahead and go to my demo website right here. Just go ahead and go to plugins and add new. And this is just a free plugin and it just gives you the ability to um, just add in different uh, customizable, customizable forms because the one on default is really ugly. So this is the one right here. It's called Cadence Email Customizer. You'll click on install now and activate it. Now, once you do that, it'll bring you to this page right here and you can go ahead and take some of these templates or you can use this one right here, which I got off their website, which uh, you can download. You have to sign up and make an account, but you get it for free. So that's just an option if you decide to have custom emails and then you can design it and all, all sorts of really cool stuff. But uh, I'm not really gonna go through it in depth. I'm just giving you the plugin and you can do it on your own time. So that's just a way how you can have some really nice uh, emails for your websites. Coupons, we'll talk about coupons in just a bit. Customers, so when someone purchases something, they're going to get an account created for them and this is where their information will be displayed. Here we have reports. Again, reports, this is gonna be probably phased out pretty soon. This is the same thing as the dashboard. It's just a different style of looking at it. It's just your sales. And then right here we have status. Now, uh, this is just, again, technical settings. So this would be something that you would give companies if they ask for, like, uh, they say, give me your logs or tools because you might have errors. So this is where you're going to get all the technical stuff, like this is the server the PHP version, the post max size, all this uh, information, which is really not that important, or it is not to us, but to hosting companies or to someone trying to fix an issue. And then there's extensions where you can get additional extensions, but I have a lot of tutorials for all those already, but that's something you can do on your own free time. So first let's go to settings here. All right, so settings right here, this is where you're going to put in your store address. Remember the video how I told you you can change all that information later? Well, this is where you can change it. Here, you can go ahead and enable taxes. You can also enable the, the, the use of coupon codes, etc. And then here you can add in currency. So this would be your different currency. So you can go ahead and select your currency. I'm using the dollar, so I'll go ahead and leave that. So there, I'll just leave this to all, you know, all of the base settings. And then for example, if you want to sell to specific countries or you want to sell to all the countries except for, you can go ahead and select them here. So this can kind of restrict people from buying on your website. So you would want to go ahead and say, all right, I only want to ship to these areas and I only want to sell to these countries, et cetera. So uh, that's pretty much it. Here we'll go to the next one, which is products. So this right here is, um, now a lot of these settings are not needed because the theme kind of controls some of these settings. But uh, for example, right here, if you want to enable reviews or enable product ratings, you can go ahead and leave those checked or unchecked. And this would be something for downloadable products. So uh, downloads require a login. So that means uh, this does not let people purchase as a guest, et cetera. So, you know, that's not for everyone here. But let's go to shipping here. Shipping is probably a little bit more uh, needed in this video. 
So we first need to set a shipping zone. So we have no shipping zones. So here, I'll select a shipping zone. So let's say, for example, I'm shipping in the United States, right? So I'll put United States. United States. And then here, we'll go ahead and find United States. Now here, I can add a shipping zone. So what do I want to charge people in the United States? Do I want to charge them a flat fee? Do I want, do I want to give them free shipping or local pickup? Well. I'll just say flat rates. I want to charge them a flat rates and the flat rates is not taxable and it's going to cost everyone 495. That's free shipping or I'm sorry. That's, that's flat rates. Now you can also add an additional shipping method like a free shipping and free shipping will require certain conditions. So free shipping requires what? Well, a minimum order of maybe $50, something like that, right? So, we can get free shipping if somebody purchases something of $50 or more on our website. And uh, yeah, I mean, that's pretty much it. And then again, we can add in more countries. So under shipping zones, we can add in another country. Now this right here is saying, let's say for example, someone buys something that's not in the United States. What do you want them to be charged by default? So we can charge them something by default. So look, if you're not in the United States and you buy from us, then we're going to charge you $9 because I don't know I don't know where you're coming from and shipping might cost more money. So I'll just charge people $9 by default. Now there is a lot of different ways on how you can price your shipping. Uh, I have another tutorial on a plugin called Table Rate Shipping and you can ship products based off weight, off quantity. Uh, it's extremely dynamic and I think that video is maybe 40 minutes long. So if you want to check it out, I will leave that in the description below. But for most of us, that's pretty standard. So you can charge people a free shipping or a flat rate, et cetera. Here, let's click on accounts and privacy. So this right here just allows people to guest checkouts, account creation. And this right here is a new feature. And this was because of the whole GDPR thing where uh, you want to delete people's information after a certain time. But uh, yeah, you can kind of go through this and take, uh, take a look at it. Privacy policy. And then this right here is personal data retention. And that's where you can kind of uh, decide where you want to delete people's information or delete their accounts if they're inactive, et cetera. So this would be all of like the technical stuff. Personally, I like these settings right here. You want to have it so people can check out automatically without making an account because making an account can kind of deter people away from buying stuff, et cetera. Here we have emails. So whenever you purchase something or whenever they purchase something, they're going to get an email and you will get an email. So right here you can see new order and this goes to me. If someone cancels the order, this goes to me. If an order was failed, it goes to me. Now right here you can see that if I put a order on processing, they'll get an email. If the order was completed, they will get an email. If I refund it, they will get an email. And you can manage those emails by clicking on manage and you can kind of design them. So you can put thank you, Thank for using our website, you're amazing, etc. And you can also turn these off and turn them on. So if you don't want all of them, you can turn them off or on, etc. Here we have integration. And this is for something of uh, I'm not gonna cover because uh, we're not gonna go over Max Mind. And then advanced right here. These are basically the pages of your cart page, your checkout account, etc. It's just notifying you. And these pages are created automatically for us. So uh, it's not that too difficult. All this stuff right here, these are just the URLs, the permalinks. So when someone views order uh, downloads, when they edit their account, these are the permalinks that are displayed. So that's just keeping you informed and everything. Now let's go ahead and enable taxes because we need to enable taxes. So right here under the general settings, I'm going to enable taxes, rates, and calculations and click on save changes. And what that's going to do is that that's going to order the tax button right here. So now there's two ways on how you can do this. And I do recommend using Jetpack. So WooCommerce created a plugin that will do the taxes for you automatically. So it'll automatically calculate the taxes based off where they're purchasing, or you can go ahead and set the taxes yourself. So for example, right here, you can enter prices with tax or without tax. You can round the tax up or down. You can display the prices in the shop, excluding tax or including tax, et cetera. And then you can display the prices during cart and checkout, excluding tax or including tax if you want to do that. Now, if you want to charge a specific tax rate, 
I'll show you how to do that, and then we'll talk about automated taxes. So let's say, for instance, I'll insert the row. I'll put United States. Let's see, you, United, there we go, United States. Now, you guys can go to taxjar.com to get more legal information, but some states require that you charge the tax based off where you're from, and other states requ require the tax based off where you're shipping to. So I can't really give you a advice on the taxes, but let's say, let's just say, for instance, I am selling digital products in California. I would need to charge, I think, no, I don't think there's no sales tax for digital products, but if I'm shipping to other states, I'm gonna charge the sales tax based off where I am. So for example, right here, I'll put, uh, you know, I'll just put California. I'll leave it at Los Angeles and I'll put it 9.75. I think that's a tax rate here. I, I don't know. And then priority. So priority is basically once you have a lot of different taxes, the priority will override everything. So number one will be the priority and then number two, number three, etc. Now compound is saying, do you want to charge taxes on top of the shipping? Which I don't think people do, but if you want to do that, you can go ahead and do that. And then again, shipping right here, choose whether this, choose whether or not this tax rate also gets applied for shipping. And then again, you can compound it as well. So that's something that you might want to consider. But um, that's basically how you can add in taxes. So I'll insert the row and save changes. Oh, I think I need to remove that one. I'll remove this one right here. There we go, remove that, there we go, save changes. So that's how you can kind of set up taxes. Now, you can just go ahead and leave it for the entire the entire US. So say, look, the entire US, or you can go into the state code and zip code, et cetera. So you can see here how you'll have a lot of different tax rates, but this right here would probably be standard, something for just one country, et cetera. Now let's talk about Jetpack. So Jetpack will allow you to have automated taxes, and they've done a very good job with it. So let's go ahead now and install Jetpack. So Jetpack will set the taxes for you automatically, which I kind of recommend actually. They don't really have a lot of good plugins, but Jetpack is actually pretty pretty damn convenient. So right here under plugins, we'll go to add new. Now this is only if you want automated taxes. So if you want the taxes done for you automatically, this is what you're gonna do. So the plugin right here is called Jetpack and it has 5 million active installs. We'll go ahead and click on install now. Now this will require you to make an account for wordpress.com, which is their sister website. So here I'll click on activate. All right, and what you'll do here is you'll go to continue with wordpress.com and you'll go ahead and make an account and you'll register. And once you do this, you will have the taxes for you created automatically with the API with Jetpack. Okay, so I connected my website with Jetpack. Now I'll need to install one more plugin to get automated taxes. So right here under plugins, you'll click on add new. Again, this is a free plugin. Now, eventually this plugin will be added inside WooCommerce Core, and that plugin is called WooCommerce Services. So this right here is a plugin that you'll need. It has almost a million active installs. So right here, you'll click on install. Now this plugin right here, it'll actually help you with printing out shipping labels, and it also give you the option to have your taxes automated. So they do have an API for, uh, I think it's tax jar or something like that. They have an API which grabs all of the taxes and everything. So it kind of pulls it from their site and gives it to you. So you don't have to do any of that technical stuff. Now right here, it's gonna say connect your store. So click on connect. Now this does seem a little repetitive and this might be a little uh, annoying, but you have to connect your website and that's pretty much it. So now your site's connected with Jetpack. So let's go over here to WooCommerce and go to settings. Now, you'll first need to make sure that your taxes are enabled right here. After that, you'll wanna make sure that this is under geolocate, and then right here, you'll click on tax. And now you'll see automated taxes appear, and you can simply click on enable automated taxes, and click on save changes. And that's it. So now that we have our shipping done, we have our taxes done, uh, the next thing we'll do is we'll create a quick coupon. So right here we have coupons. And before we check out, I wanna use a coupon to kind of, you know, just give a discount. So here I'll put Daryl10, which is, I get a lot of coupons with that name. So right here you have some options. So you can do a percentage off the cart. So for example, 10% off. You can also grant this to give free shipping and you can set an expiration date. So I'm gonna say this coupon's only good for another five days and that's it. And then there's other options right here, like usage restrictions. 
So the minimum spend, so what's the minimum they need to spend in order to grant this coupon? And what's the maximum? You can include certain products or exclude certain products. You can even do product categories or you can exclude categories. And then usage limits would be something like how many times can the person use this coupon? How many times can this coupon be used? And then how many times can it be used per user? But I'll just leave it all as a, you know as unlimited. So here I'll just say, uh, I wanna give 50% off. Daryl, we'll do Daryl 50. So Daryl 50, and then right here, gives 50% off. And I will publish this coupon. All right, so now that we have our coupons and everything's ready to go, let's add some payment gateways. Now, right here under the WooCommerce, we have settings. So if you wanna take payments on your website, you're gonna click on payments right here. Now, if you are in Europe or United States, the most common one is going to be PayPal and also Stripe. So Stripe is a free service and they will go ahead and accept the payments for you and they will transfer automatically to your bank accounts. Uh, PayPal again is another very popular one. The only con of, of PayPal is that they'll have to be redirected to PayPal and then they will pay through PayPal and they'll return back to your website. Now if you are from India or if you are from the Middle East, you can use twocheckout.com. Also, you can use Razorpay. These two are really good for uh, Southeast Asia and also the Middle East and India as well. So these are probably the top two uh, for those countries. So um, that's another option. Also PayPal, PayPal is worldwide as well. But the most popular one for people in Europe and United States is going to be Stripe and also PayPal. So it's pretty simple. You go ahead and you sign up with PayPal, right? So you make an account, you go through the process and that's it. You just make an account. Now the same email that you use to sign up with this right here, you're going to take that email address right here and you're going to put it in your PayPal settings. So right here, I'll click on manage. So right here we have enable PayPal. Now I have an account with PayPal and this is my email for PayPal. So when you make an account, all you need to do is take that same email and paste it and you're done, that's it. Now when someone checks out with PayPal, it's going to automatically go inside of your PayPal account. So it's that easy, it's very simple to do, it's very easy to get started. The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna do Stripe. Now since we have an SSL, we can use Stripe. Now if you don't have this set up yet, you will need to have this set up before you use Stripe because Stripe requires and SSL certificates. So right here under payments, I'll click on payments again. And uh, what we're gonna do is right here under Stripe, you'll click on manage. Or first you'll have to enable it. You'll enable it and then you'll go ahead and uh, mess with that, etc. So you're first going to click on enable Stripe and you're gonna see that right here we have enable test mode. Now there's test mode and there's real mode. So the first thing you'll do is you'll make an account with Stripe. So go ahead and create an account with Stripe. Now there is a process to make an account, verification, et cetera. And once you do that, I'm gonna go ahead and go through the process of the dashboard. So this right here is my dashboard for my test account for Stripe. Now, if you don't have Stripe enabled on your payments, so I was actually on my demo website, and if you don't have it on your website, you just need to install the plugin for it. It's a free plugin. So right here under plugins, you'll go to add new. And then right here, you simply just type in Stripe and it'll be Stripe for WooCommerce. And that'll just give you the ability to accept payments with Stripe. So right here, you'll select WooCommerce Stripe Payment Gateway. I'm installing it and here I will activate it. Okay, and then going back over here to WooCommerce and settings, going over to payments, you'll now see that we have tons of options for Stripe. So. Uh, there's a lot of different uh, countries where you can adjust it, etc. But right here, you'll see Stripe. I will click on Enable and Set Up. So Stripe right here is enabled. Title, we'll just put Credit Card. Right here, we have Enable Test Mode. Now, if you want to enable Real Mode, you just uncheck that, and now you can see that this says Live and live, so live publishable key, live secret key. I'll run you through both, just to make sure you're comfortable here. So I'll click on uh, test mode for now. I'll go back to my accounts. 
Now right here, I want to make sure that this is under view test data. So it's orange and you can see test data right here. I'll go to developers and go to the API keys. I'll just copy and paste this and that's it. We're done. So publishable key right here. And then here, reveal secret key and we're done. Okay. And then right here, this is a inline credit card form. So this kind of creates like a different little style form. There's two styles. So if you want to check that out, so you can leave that checked, but I'm not going to have that checked. And I want to disable all of those weird buttons on my website because this right here, it's like um, they have to store everything through their browser on PayPal, uh, Apple Pay and Chrome payments. So if they don't have that. So they're not going to know what it is. So I just leave it disabled. So here I will click on save and we are all done. Let's go ahead now and go shopping. So let's have some fun. Now let's just pretend I'm the regular customer coming to the website for the very first time and I want to buy something. So let's do this. All right, awesome. Black Friday sale. Look at this. I'm going to add this to the carts. And there you go. So I got these two right here. And I want to view the carts. So I think I put a coupon code onto this domain, right? So here I'll type in Daryl50. There we go. And apply this code. And look at that. We got 50% off. How amazing is that? So here I will click on proceed to checkout. And I'll go ahead and fill out this information right now. <clears throat> all right. So I filled out my information. You can see here I put in my address and everything else. Now, again, this is all fictional information here. I'll put in credit card. So I'm going to put in my secret credit card so you guys can steal it. Here we go. Guys, this is a fake credit card. So 4242 is actually <laughs> this is the test mode. So people email me like, hey, bro, you left your credit card on the Internet. I'm like, guys, it's, it's not my credit card. It's fake. So here I have agreed. I have agreed. And I will click on place order. All right. Awesome. So the order has been received and the order is now complete. So let's go over here to Stripe and let's go to my home. And look at that. We can see that the payment is there and it was just accepted. So we have just made money. So congratulations. Now, if you want to make this real, which most of you do, all you need to do right here is click this, go to developers, grab the API keys, and now you're going to grab the live key. So once you're ready, once your website's ready, you'll just go ahead and swap the key. So that's all you need to do. Now, also your customer can go into their accounts and check their orders and you can see how it's processing. They can change all their information right here. Now, also in the other video or the beginning of the tutorial, you saw that we added something to the websites. We added like a little flip box. So here, so here I'll scroll down and I think there's a flip box or something like that. Yeah, flip book. Now this is just, you know, if for if you want to have it, have it to the account, which I, I like it. I think it's really cool and you can add that into their account and they can like uh, look at your future products. So um, that's pretty much it for accepting payments. So at this point, um, we've accepted payments. We know how to accept payments. Again, if you want to accept real payments right away on the website, let me just show you one more time because I, I don't want you to leave me a nasty comment. So right here, we'll go to uh, WooCommerce and settings. And then right here under payments, you'll go to payments. Under Stripe, you'll click on manage. And then right here, you disable this. And then right here, it says publishable key. You copy this and then you paste that. And then right here, you just reveal the secret key and then you paste it in there and you're done. So that will allow you the ability to accept credit card payments that are real. So now you can accept real credit card payments and you can always save their information too. So they can come back to your website. They don't have to enter in their credit card information. And then here I'll put in like a, this is from Daryl Wilson websites. So this right here is the statements of where they're getting it from. So in a nutshell, that is payments. So as of right now, your e-commerce website is live and you can start accepting payments right away from credit cards all over around the world. Now, one thing I want to talk about before I let you all go is mobile responsiveness. Now, by default, Flatsum is very mobile responsive. And by default, you won't need to make a lot of adjustments on default. Now, for example, this is the website, how it looks like on desktop. This is what it looks like on mobile devices and also, I'm sorry, tablets and also mobile devices. Now, if you want to change stuff, what you can do is you can actually go ahead and go to the specific section right here. And you can see here how these are highlighted to either green 
and all you would do right here is go in the options and make any changes you want. Now, right here, you can see that this overlay and all this section right here, this is being applied specifically only for the tablets. So this is where you can kind of adjust things and make them look different, etc. So for example, uh, padding, you can reduce the padding and you can change the minimum height, etc. Now, again, this is only being applied specifically for the tablets. Here, I'll click on mobile and we can do the same thing. You know, I can adjust the padding, minimum height, et cetera. And you can go ahead and go through these options and mess around with them. Now, if I go back right here to the desktop, you'll see it looks exactly the same. So when you are making changes, you'll wanna make sure that you, if it's not mobile responsive enough for you, then you can go ahead and go through these options and check it out. So that's pretty much it for my e-commerce tutorial, guys. I hope this was really helpful. By now, I showed you how to create the websites. I've showed you all how to design all the different pages. Now, remember, you can go to any page right here, like your account, and you can click on Edit with UX Builder, or you, you can use the theme customizer if you decide to do that. It's strictly up to you. I showed you all how to accept payments. I've showed you all basically everything that you need to know on accepting payments and building your e-commerce website from scratch. Also, you've noticed that here is the receipt that we got from the purchase. So you can see right here, 11 minutes ago, this was from the website and we got the discount and you can see all the information right here. So we know that the emails are working just fine. Also, for those of you who want to display your products on various websites, you can watch my video on 20 other websites where you can list your products to sell your products online. And additionally, I just made a new video on the best WooCommerce plugins that can make you a lot of money. Now, I do have a lot of other videos that talk about uh, booking websites, multi-vendor websites. So be sure to check out my channel and make sure to subscribe because I do have tons of content that relates to uh, selling online, e-commerce and WooCommerce. So again, guys, I hopefully this video was really helpful for you all. Make sure to give me a big thumbs up and leave me a comment. Let me know how this was. I do spend a lot of time making these videos. I think this one took me three weeks to make. So hopefully it was very helpful for you. My name is Daryl Wilson and I will see you guys in my next video. Take care.